welcome Yo, to Yo, dude. <laughs> we're late. Yo, it is the AFC late. It's the AFC late table, folks. <laughs> I mean, you know that regardless of when we scheduled this episode, bare minimum, 15 minutes late. In fact, you it, might as it well was 730 and I even pushed it to 740 to try to avoid it. But man, the chat hates us right now. In fact, I'll tell you what, man, might as well just talk to BetUS and see if they'll put a line of like how late <laughs> the boys of the AFC's round <laughs> are about to be. I mean, we're just getting random conversations over here. Folks, welcome to another edition. We are very, very excited. What the hell are we talking about today? Free agency I was, recap. I was about and to it, say, I mean, there's a reason why we're late, though, because we just love talking. We love conversating. And before yeah. anybody asks, where's TD at? TD is joining. Don't you guys worry. Something came up from him. Uh, so he will be uh, back. At, he will join us throughout the show. So TD Finstock will be here. Don't worry. He 1,010% will. Folks, please do us a favor and smash that like button the second that you come in. Because that is the easiest way for us to grow. And let me tell you what. I want to jump out there and give a giant announcement. Something I'm very excited about. Folks, we are on the cusp. The cusp of finishing out Roundtable Sports. And by me saying that, I mean that we are so close my friends, to having each and every single round table finalized, my friend. We are literally just one creator away from the AFC West and one creator away from the AFC North for having every single round table locked down for this upcoming summer, my friends. All right? I was just convincing Colby to be the host of the AFC North round table, so that's pretty yes. exciting. Zbot will be hosting the AFC West. And this is a beautiful thing, folks. You'll go over to Roundtable Sports channel and you'll see all of these vacancies, right? And a lot of our um, very, very dedicated fans have already started subscribing to these channels. So if you just want, you know, divisional content coming up, and we're going full steam ahead starting in July, certainly go ahead and do us a favor. Subscribe to each and every single one of those folks because we are absolutely cooking. NFC South has been finalized. NFC East has been finalized. As soon as we get west and north ready to go, things are about to be cooking, folks. I am sincerely looking forward to what we have in store. Richie, how are you feeling about this? Nah, man, this is super exciting. I mean, to talk about the work that's been put in behind the scenes, this is what we're talking about, man. Shout out to Mr. Dan. He has been grinding to find the right hosts to represent what we do here at Roundtable Sports. Oh, yeah. As you guys know, you were with us when we first launched the first expansion, <clears throat> which was in the middle of the season. Right, just to recap it a little bit, it's a lot of fun, and you guys are a big part of this. Okay, our first expansion was the NFC North Roundtable. Look at that; it's at three point six seven k subscribers, which is crazy. I'll never forget the first show we did with the NFC North Roundtable has the most views out of any of the shows still, which is I think hilarious. Eleven thousand <laughs> views, and I think a lot of that had to do with the AFC East Roundtable um, being a reason why this got over 11,000 views. They didn't even touch 11K after the first episode because we were like, please go watch it, right? So this is the first expansion, and then we expanded next to the AFC South Roundtable, which is right behind them at 3.25K. We got a great job over there, and then we launched a third show on the NFC West Roundtable, which is a lot of fun, and then now we're finally getting the final pieces of the puzzle AFC West, NFC East, AFC North, and the NFC South. Guys, if you did not subscribe to all these channels, we'd greatly appreciate it. If you can simply go click the link at the top of the chat, it'll take you to the mother channel, which is Roundtable Sports' YouTube channel. This is our main hub where we have a lot of shows launched here as well that's coming up. Don't worry, this is a temporary logo. We have a logo release coming in the summer as well, so stay tuned. A rebrand, kind of not even a rebrand, but a launch. Right, because this is a temporary logo. I wouldn't even consider this an actual logo. So subscribe to Roundtable Sports, and then you scroll down. You'll see all of our NFL channels. If you guys want to do us a favor, subscribe to each and every single one of these. It's been a lot of fun. And then last but not least, I do got to give a big shout-out because we didn't even acknowledge this yet. We have Yo. 14K subs. Let's go. Nice. Let's go. We have 14K. So thank you guys so much for 14,000 subscribers, and thank you to Love everybody that. who's been supporting this. And my favorite part about what we're building here at Roundtable Sports, personally, I'm just going to speak from me, and I think everybody here at Roundtable Sports would agree that you guys are a part of this, right? Like everybody in the chat that's watching, like we're we have such a tight knit community that support what we do, and you guys subscribing to every channel, you guys liking it, you guys sending in super chats, like just know that every super chat, every donation 
it goes right back into opening up these YouTube channels. Okay. That's not free to do this. So just want to say again, thank you all for supporting what we do here. And it's been a, an absolute pleasure to do this with my friends. So let's keep it going, baby. It's a beautiful thing. Colby, I don't, like, I don't even think I asked how you were doing today. How are you doing today? <laughs> Sorry, I just took you and ran with it. It's okay. Yeah, guys, I, you guys already know. I'm chilling. I'm popping out. I dropped a video earlier today, and I just knew it was going to get some backlash from Patriots fans, and it completely oh. did. Cause, you Why? Know, what did you everybody, say? Everybody's Why, negative. I, uh, I said I, I basically uh, released a video about how the Patriots had uh, an elite free agency because PFF graded them as a top echelon you know, team with their grading in terms of free agency grades out of all 32 teams. And Patriots fans were like, it was an F. It was a C minus. What are you talking about? Uh, so people are sounding off on the channel right now. And uh, it's interesting to watch. Do you ever get frustrated when somebody comments and you're just like, ah, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth Yo, it. Yo, dude, oh God, I'll be honest kidding? with you, man. And so I'll be honest with you. I do my best not to read comments like on my YouTube videos, to be honest <laughs> with you. Because like I tend to get in like, I don't know. I mean, I was raised to always have the last word. And sometimes like there's threads of me like fighting with Mr. Captain Anonymous, like seven, five, six for four hours. And I was like, you know what? Might as well not read them because I can't trust myself not to, no. you know, start berating a fool like right in public. I just can't do it. We've seen so, you do it before. Especially he's seen me do it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Most the fun, the fun feature that TikTok has that I've never done before because I'm just not on TikTok is how you can put the comment on the screen and make a video <laughs> like on. yeah make a video on it those videos yeah. that dan makes bro and he's attacking a comment like all right chad you know uh, <laughs> all right chad whatever, whatever who all right is, chad whatever. relax <laughs> yeah dude relax but no jerry I mean, with the okay. first super chat of oh. the show though is that dan mitchell dan did you fix your chicken neck necklace necklace and go jets no, bro, because this company sent me like seven of these things. I was pissed because seven. I broke my drumstick. And I'm not sure about you guys, but okay, I'm probably one of the few people in Buffalo that actually believe this, but I'm a massive like drums above flats any day of the week. I'm a big drum guy. I love it. Flats are okay, but I'm a huge drum guy. And I broke my drum, dude. Like here, like look at this, bro. That's a hot take. It was wrapped on my uh, uh, necklace. Now it's just like a, I don't know, something like that. But it was broken. That's a hot take. Highly upset. Oh, why? You a flats guy? I feel like majority is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'd say most people are flats people, dude. I'm a drumstick sure. guy. Colby, where are you at in the chicken? I love them both. Bro? I mean, I'm not going to lie. Feel like, I feel like you get. They taste the same, obviously. But, like you know, the it's flats, just, you get the more quality you meat. You know what I'm saying? I feel like with the yeah. drumstick, you can be hit or miss. I mean, I, I have know, a special, uh, a special like, what do you call it? Tactic when it comes to eating flats, where I rip the meat off in one clean bite. Just, I've seen that, but I can't do it. Oh my oh, god, I mastered that. I'm I feel like I won't be a man until I can. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I not gonna a be a bit. man. <laughs> it's a rite <laughs> of passage, man. And someone asked again, "Where's TD? TD Finn's talk is dealing with something right now, but he will be joining the show throughout the show. Don't know exactly when, but he will be joining." Um, even though he did troll the world saying he's retiring. <laughs> he's not retiring. He said that it was an early uh was an early April Fool's joke. I was like, TD, that's wild for me. Yeah, well, it was that and uh he was in a heavy debate with the Sports Illustrated uh uh oh, his reporter this morning. With him and Omar Kelly were beefing back and forth on Twitter. We see that. And so I gave a play by play on my stream this morning. No, sheesh. I did not see that, but that's <laughs> that's something TD would do. That's that's wild, but honestly, good for him. <laughs> good for him. TD Finn's talk is another human on Twitter, bro. He really is. Dude, the monster. He he's is. an entirely different guy. In fact, you know what? Sometimes I've asked myself if somebody else runs his Twitter based off of how he acts on this show and then how he acts on Twitter. That is one thing in particular. But Colby, I did kind of want to discuss a little bit about your video that you posted about the free agency situation because you know what? I probably have to agree with you. I feel like a lot of NFL fans, right? They need like big ticket items. They need big names for them to be like, oh, hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, bro. We totally won free agency. But in my opinion, I really can't think of many teams that have been able to build a successful, sustainable roster, a Super Bowl roster through free agency by itself. 
expand yeah. on that for all the moves you guys did end up making since we wanted to recap free agency. We might as well go on ahead and just give our grades of what all of our teams ended up doing. Start off with the Pats, man. Why did you grade them so high and why is everybody coming for your throat? Yeah, so I'm I'm going to do a <laughs> video on my channel coming up here too. So if you want to hear like individual breakdowns on every single player, you guys can check out my channel for that. That will be out probably later this week. But like I said, PFF graded the Patriots a B plus for their free agency. I wouldn't go that high. OK, but I also wouldn't go as low as some people trying to say that the Patriots deserve an F or they deserve a D or they deserve a C minus. I would go probably honestly, realistically, a B minus. And a lot of Patriots fans aren't going to like that. But Dan, like you said, you do not build a consistent team through free agency. And as Patriots fans, we saw that they spent the most guaranteed money out of any team back in 2021 when they signed Nelson Aguilar, when they signed Matthew Judon, when they signed Kendrick Bourne, all of these big names, John U. Smith, Hunter Henry, the majority of those guys didn't work out. The problem with free agency is that if you're going to spend a bag on guys, you better make sure that those guys are going to fit your system and fit your scheme. Because if they don't, you're going to be held bent against the cap for a player that doesn't work out for you. And unfortunately, the Patriots have done that twice since Tom Brady has left. They gave a massive contract to Juju Smith-Schuster. Didn't deserve it. Actually, three times. They gave a contract extension to uh, uh, Devontae Parker this past offseason. Didn't deserve it. He's not on the team now. Gave a massive contract in 2021 to John New Smith. He was traded, what, two years later into his Patriots career. The, the best way to set your team back, especially in a rebuild like the Patriots are in, is to give out contracts to guys that essentially aren't going to work for your team. Free agency for every single team should start with retaining your own players. And that's exactly what the Patriots did. Unfortunately, too, the Patriots' needs didn't exactly match up with what the free agency market was. And look, I was one of the same fans going out saying, what are we doing? What are we doing? This is a, a boatload of crap because we were put into a false sense of reality. Patriots general, uh, excuse me, general manager Elliot Wolf came out saying that the Patriots are going to weaponize the offense. You have Gerard Mayo coming out, their head coach, saying that they're going to burn some cash. And then they they don't. Now the Patriots still spent some of the most cap space out of all NFL teams. They're at like 40 some million right now, but they started with like 101, 100.2 million. So they they spent a lot of money. The problem just being that they brought back a lot of their, their same players. And Patriots fans are under this mindset of you're bringing back your own players from a four-win team. The Patriots were a four-win team last year because they didn't have consistency at quarterback. They didn't have good coaching. They had injuries. And they had one of the hardest, if not the hardest, schedule in the entire National Football League this year. All of those things are going to be different for this upcoming 2024 season, especially because the guys that the Patriots re-signed makes a lot of sense. Hunter Henry was the best tight end on the market. Kendrick Bourne was the second best available wide receiver on the market. Calvin Ridley being the best after guys like Mike Evans, T Higgins and Pittman all were franchise tagged and then signed to extensions. You look at what the Patriots did, even signing Michael on the best offensive lineman on the free agency board. Yes, they're bringing back their own players, but they were also the best players at their respective positions, or at least top at their respective positions on the free agency board. The Patriots are going to pivot to the draft. That's how they're going to build their team. But if you can hit on your draft picks, that is how you, you build sustainable success for many, many years to come. If you want to go out and splurge in free agency, congrats. You're, you're playing with fire and it might work for you for a couple of years. But at some point, you're going to be held bent against the cap and it's all going to crumble down. I want my team to be successful for the next 10 plus years, not successful for the next three, five years max. Mm. That's just me. Bro, I, I see myself in you three years I ago. I see myself in you. <laughs> Colby is Richie. There's a lot of pain behind them eyes, baby. Go <laughs> three and four years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I mean yeah. that in the best way. Oh, you man. Yeah. <laughs> Again, well, again, I'm not happy necessarily got, about how it went, but it, it's been not stuck, about okay. man. What was the uh What's up, buddy? You okay? Mm -hmm. you yeah, okay? yeah, man. I'm just you know preparing for my five day retirement, man. Five day retirement. Yeah, oh, yeah so why don't you uh again? tell the people? Yeah, why you're retiring? Well, they're investigating me in the P Diddy case. Um <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so I can't speak on it, dude. In the P. Diddy case. 
yeah, TD, I, I hope I you're doing well, my me. friend. Um, just know that I've been thinking of you. Uh, I saw that post that you made, and it's like, I feel you, bro. You know, these haters oh, are out to get you. And yeah, man, I, I hope, hope all is well. They're taking you, and they're trying to take your boy down, man. But it's all good. We're going to be all right. So you King Carter, Lodge, huh? he, says he needs to retire them lies. That's what he's saying. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, TD, yeah. welcome to the show. <laughs> yeah, what's up, baby? Let's go. Yeah. Welcome back. We missed you, shout man. out to my uh I got some Knicks fans in the chat. I just gotta give a big shout out to the Knicks right now. Deuce McBride doing crazy. Mitchell Robinson's back on the court, baby. Let's go, Knicks. Okay. Oh my gosh. Right into what that, TD? What's wrong with being a fan of a great basketball team? Mitchell Richie, Robinson, Richie. who's out for 50 games, is back tonight. I'm happy. Richie ain't nothing fun about the New York Knicks, bro. Guess what, friends? You're a pure hater, bro. Guess what, friends? I have a surprise segment. I hope you're prepared. Share oh, I'm not prepared, but I'm ready. Share your screen, Richie. I hope it's multiple choice. Share your Literally. screen. That's right, boys. We're doing a three mock round. draft. Uh, I like. We're it. doing no a three-round mock draft. PFL. But before oh, that, we got that. Richie Fresh. Evening, boys. Let me be very mm -hmm. clear. New kickoff rules I'm down with. This new tackle crap is ridiculous. These players know what they signed up for. I give it half of a season it's gonna get stupid super quick richie thank you so much for the damn super chat certainly goes a long way smash that like button for us too we love you that's actually pretty interesting folks because the nfl did end up uh really mixing things up with some of the rule changes one of the most controversial hands down the hip drop tackle situation oh, i don't think that we have been on this show and have given our takes on it nope. i'll start off with colby man what do you think about this is it BS or are you okay with it? Thank you, Richie, for the super chat. By the way. <laughs> yeah, Richie, you were king for that one. Um, But look, I, I like the kickoff rule. I think that that's interesting. I'm fine with it. it it's going to be different. It's going to feel different. But I think that it could be uh, something that brings more entertainment to the game. And I think that we could see a lot more kickoff returns. Um. And, and we will see more kickoff returns, but I'm just saying in terms of, of touchdowns, I think that we'll see a lot more of those with this new rule. In terms of the hip drop tackle, uh, I'm going to be honest, and maybe you haven't heard this, but this this isn't about player safety. This isn't about player safety. That's a bunch of BS. You know what? Because if you want to protect the players, you know the best way to protect your players is, is stop the turf. Remove the turf. Make all of the owners pay for grass. If that's, if that's what you want to do, if you want to protect the players, stop making it hard for defensive players to do their damn job. We're not playing football anymore. This was the most physical, most athletic sport, and it's not anymore. It's flag football. I, I can't even tell you how to properly make a tackle at this point. This isn't for player safety, okay? Again, if you want player safety, go and put grass in. This is for the lone fact that the NFL is trying to make offenses more uh, enjoyable to watch, right? This is an offensive-minded league. Good offenses are fun to watch, and this rule is going to specifically help offenses out because – it's going to allow them, uh, you know, offensive players to drag these defensive players along with them, get that extra couple of yards, be able to break tackles. Because again, these defensive players aren't going to be able to tackle the way they used to. They're not going to be able to use their body weight. So imagine it like this. Imagine that there's like a six foot four tight end and he's matched up against like a five foot 10, uh, let's say defensive back, whether that's cornerback safety. That guy is going to have a very hard time making a tackle without using his body weight. So that that cornerback, mm -hmm. un until the rest of the team rallies around him, is going to get dragged like a, a dog on a leash for a good 10 yards before the rest of the yeah. defense comes and help him make a tackle. This is all yeah. about making the league more enjoyable to watch because it's not about player safety. There's way better ways that we could uh, help the players be more safe. But that involves the owners actually spending some money. They'd rather change the game that we all love to watch rather than putting forth the money to actually take care of the players. Now, one thing I will agree with you here on is that I feel like with the kickoff rule and also with this hip drop tackle rule, it's one goal that they're trying to accomplish. And that, my friend, is higher scoring games. Both of those rules, if you think about it, with essentially a – game of red rover for the kickoff right now and then now the hip drop tackle where you are going to be seeing so many undersized dbs and linebackers getting absolutely rolled 
by Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, say that he can come back healthy. It's it's going to be an absolute cluster, and we are going to see an increase in average amount of score going into it. Now, as far as the hip drop is concerned, I really don't know. And so I really don't know. I think that a lot of these guys are just going to have to hit the weight room a little bit, and they're going to have to grown-ass man tackle. What's going to be frustrating, because I can promise you this, there's going to be a couple of games that are going to be completely turned around. The tides will change based off of this penalty. All right? It, it's going to be like fourth and 20 for some team, right? And then it's going to be a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down in a very integral part of a playoff game. I guarantee you that. A hip drop tackle penalty will be the reason why a team has a second shot at coming back and winning at the end. It's probably going to be Patrick Mahomes. TD, thoughts on the hip drop tackle? Talk to me. I talked about it um earlier today at one point. Um, I don't. I just hate it, man. It's 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 almost impossible. Kobe laid it out perfectly. You know, so it's just some of these guys. The, the, the football is a game of angles too. You know, a guy isn't always coming straight up chest to chest with you. Sometimes you got to chase them on the side and your arms are going to be good enough. These guys are strong. They're powerful down low. These running backs have to be taken down. And one of the ways you do it is dropping that hip using your body weight. I think they should have outlawed hip drop tackles from the back. Pause. Um, whoa, <laughs> the ones from the, <laughs> the ones from the front are just fine. Pause. Um, in my no. opinion, whoa. it's no wonder you're being investigated with Diddy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Um, but yeah, man, um, I don't Can like the jump? rule. I think they're gonna um end up changing it. I think they're gonna end up changing it at the end of the day, and they're gonna do it in the case of just not mentioning it. Um, like say somebody does one that ain't egregious, it's not bad, they just won't call a flag. But it also makes it a little funny if they do throw the flag, you know, um, in key okay. moments of the game. So I don't like that part of it. It's kind of like pass interference, though, in a way, right? Like we don't necessarily know what like pass interference is. I go back to that call, or or really what, what was it holding in the Super Bowl two years ago, the the Philly, uh Philadelphia Eagles and the Chiefs where yeah. Juju Smith-Schuster was, like, held, but it was just, like, a, a slight, like, grab of the jersey or whatever. I just feel like the NFL rules need to be clarified to a T so we all know what they are and not, we're going to call it sometimes, we're not going to call it other times. And I think that this is exactly what that rule is going to be. It's going to make fans annoyed because it's going to be called at certain moments, and then it's not going to be called at other moments because we don't know the true definition. We don't know when it should be called versus when it shouldn't be called. And it's going to cost teams playoff spots. It's going to cost team games. It's going to cost them Super yeah. Bowl. Is now there like so? There's apparently three things that need to happen. It's like something like it's grabbed by the hips. There's a swivel. Like there's basically three categories that need to be met in order for it to actually be called. So I'd probably agree with you on that, that it's going to be one of those like ticky tacky calls that are only going to strategically be placed. Because there's so many pass interferences that we see on the field that just don't get called or there's like a shit ton of offensive holdings that just don't get called. I have a feeling that these refs are going to keep the flags in their back pocket and only throw it when the game is on the damn line. Richie, talk to me about the hip drop, baby. <laughs> I mean, you guys are screwed. <laughs> like, <laughs> how are you guys tackling Brock Bowers without dropping the hip, baby? Who is Brock? How Bowers? are you tackling? What'd you say? Who is Brock Bowers? Are you, are you for real? Is that somebody? Hey, is there somebody hey, you're supposed if we want to be serious, hey, if we want to be serious, if Josh Allen actually... gets past, hey, if Josh Allen gets past wait, wait, the defensive Dan, we have line, an issue here, Dan. Why? Because Didi's serious about uh, this. Uh, Hold on, hold on. He's looking uh, it up right now. No, no, no. <laughs> he said, yeah, Brock Bowers, <laughs> tight end, right? Who, who, no, I'm just saying, yeah, if, yeah. He, if the Jets draft him, who is he? Is he even relevant? Damn. I mean, He's so what's your problem? Why, why, why would you bring defense. that up? No, 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 but if the Jets draft him, because Richie's bringing it up, who is he? Does it matter? He's like, Brock like, Bowers, bro. Just like Brees Hall wouldn't matter if he was on the Jets. Just like what do you Saul mean? Brees Hall's coming off the Saul's one of Gardner the best running backs. Matter. Literally, Brees Hall is the Wilson second best running back in the game last year. What are you talking about? He's a Jet. None of them are relevant. And? None of them are relevant, Richie. 
I Rock mean, you, you know, like you're trying to push my button and it ain't working, but keep going. Listen, <laughs> at the end of the day, all I'm saying is this, this hip tackle thing is trash. Um, I think they need to go ahead and go with the players union. Like, this is what I don't understand. How are you going to vote something in that the players don't even want? And you talking about they safety. Running backs like it. Well, I'm sure they do. I'm sure who, they do. Who spoke in favor of it? Kenyon Drake? Because he got hurt on it. one of those tackles. Does he even play in the league still? I don't know. I'm just trying <laughs> yes, to see. Right. 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 With the $5 super chat. As much as oh. I hate to say it, I hate Colby. Just kidding. Colby is right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why do you hate to say it? <laughs> why don't you read this, Colby? It's to you. As much as I hate to say it, Colby is right. I don't know why you would hate to say that. It's okay for me to be right now. And then. <laughs> uh, how is a five foot nine cornerback supposed to take down a guy like Darren Derrick Henry? This is BS. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. We're gonna see a lot of those like Rob Gronkowski days, right? Where Gronk yeah. is just bulldozing through guys, stiff arming, and it's all because yeah. not from a physicality standpoint, but all because of this yeah. rule. It's now, it's now. Let's be honest with ourselves too. Who the hell is gonna? Who the hell is gonna be able to tackle Josh Allen? Like dude's gonna be at, like dude's probably gonna rush for like thirteen hundred yards next year without that hip drop tackle. I can't wait for it, folks. Dude, he's a big. Oh dude. my gosh, y'all are ridiculous. It ain't gonna be blown into out of proportion like we all think, though. By the way, Devon H A no go right through him. <laughs> well, well, like Devon H A. Yeah, 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 you don't need a hip I drop. I mean, like, like yeah, Richie, you, right you know what's sad about this conversation? Y'all talking about the people on your te y'all team who's going to be harder to tackle. You can't even catch our guys, so it doesn't even matter. You mm. see the difference there? You see, you see, there's levels to this, fellas. Y'all worrying about the advantage for the lowly personnel y'all have. We don't even care about the rule because it don't apply. You're not even going to be able to catch our guys. It's that simple. So I mean, you so got. I forgot. You do have two of managing the ball to those playmakers. No, these are right. handoffs. These are handoffs, okay? And these oh. are quick passes. Run after mm. the catch. Well, we shall and see. To be honest with you, like, listen, say that it came to the Oklahoma drill, like, versus A-Chan and Richie. <laughs> I'd probably take Richie, to be honest with you. Stop it. Yeah, you, I don't even I know. What's a chain got on me, bro? Come on dude, now. Dude, Why how big is disrespecting a chain yeah. like this? See, this yo, man dude, is how, Yo, dude, how big is a chain? Let me see. Let me He's see. just short. He's hey, five foot nine, one eighty seven. You're I overhyping could him. Dude, I could beat him. Dude, dude, I could beat him. I could beat him in, Stop, in an Oklahoma. Dan. I promise. Stop, that. Dan. It's all muscle, Dan. It ain't. It ain't. Come on, man. Well, <laughs> I think right, we shall see, guys. We do. Want to give a big shout out to Bet US Sportsbook. As you all know, they've been the proud sponsor of this channel, and they just came out with the odds of the win totals for each team, which mm. is really exciting. Yeah. And we do want to uh, uh, share that with you guys. Worst time of the year. <laughs> oh, Patriot, worst time Patriot's of the year. not happy about this. <laughs> but folks, if you do want to check out Bet US Sportsbook, please do us a favor. If you did not already, simply click the link down below in the description. Open up your Bet US uh, account today and receive a 125% sign up bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,500, including a 10% gambler's insurance. We would really appreciate it, guys. Really does go a long way. Bet US is a big reason why we're able to do what we do here, not only on the AFC's roundtable, but everywhere beyond roundtable sports, of course, as well. The huddle produced by Bet US TV has been a pleasure. So let's hear a quick word from BetUS. BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. BetUS, where the game begins. All right. Bet US, where let's the get game into some win begins. totals and get into some debates, baby. Woo! All right, Whoa. let's start off with the New England Patriots. Of course, get me fired up. Straight off they the right are, here. I think, the most intriguing one. So the Patriots is at four and a half wins. Oh, my gosh. Is that the lowest of all teams? It might be. Um, them, what are the, uh, what are the, 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 the uh, Panthers? It might be the Panthers. Yeah, it's them and the Panthers have the exact same odds, four and a half. Yeah. Everyone in, in the opinion, chat, let us know. Are you taking the over or the under on Patriots four and a half wins? If you Holy, want money, convince you us why over. it's an over. You take the over. What, what, what is this? Again, I mean, it's kind of what I hit, hit on before, Richie, right? Like, 
you're bringing back players from last year that were quality to your team, but also if they can just bite the injury bug, they'll be fine. They had backups to backups playing last year. They had the hardest ranked schedule in the National Football League last year. They had different quarterbacks in from a week, not even week to week, from a drive to drive basis. You'll have an upgrade at quarterback. You'll have an upgrade at coaching. And I'm not saying from a schematic standpoint every week, but from you know, actual uh, personnel decisions made. The Patriots will have better coaching and they're going to have an easier schedule. Okay. I'm not saying they're going to be a playoff team, but you know what? Give me six wins for the Patriots. That's above four and a half. If you're telling me that they are going to be equivalent to worse than they were last year. Nah, mm -mm. you don't know football. You don't know football and you need to get off of here and you need to go watch some film on the new England Patriots. That's all I'm uh. saying. Especially when Drake May comes to the New England Patriots and y'all are like, oh, dear God, Dynasty 2.0 is here. I don't want to hear oh, it. Oh, give me a break. I don't want to hear it, 2.0. I don't want to hear it. Dynasty 2.0. Dynasty 2.0. It's pending. What it's the... pending. All right. Oh, my it's pending. gosh. We're waiting for You're the confirmation. You're lucky to even. So, Kobe, oh, I'll be man. honest with you, man. Like, oh. I feel like Drake May is a way better fit for you guys than Jay. 100%. 100%. I feel like he's a thousand percent a better fit. Did Jaden Daniels have a bad day today? I heard, right? Did he really? Uh, he had he some sort of elbow injury or something like that, like some sort of elbow issue. They did just yeah. report that, so I think that's probably going to drop his stock a bit. No, I saw I, I I saw a doctor who um spoke on his elbow situation. He said it's all good. It's not even a concern at all. What happens is he must have just hit his elbow on something. And we all have this thing under our elbows and our knees that we never know about. Um, but if you hit it hard enough in a spot, it causes the area to fill with water and it looks like it's poking out. And that's all it is. It's it's little to no concern. It's really a thing that's aggravating for him than being of a concern of any type of medical issue like like he's hurt or anything. It's just a fluid buildup that happens when you hit your elbow hard enough that it didn't fracture. It's a mechanism our body does to um protect it, actually. And it's zero concern, and he's it's not even an injury. It's just a flare-up um, that is just a discomfort for him. Well, tell that to the commanders so that they take him, and then we can have Drake May. <laughs> so the Jets are at nine and a half wins, the same win total as last year. TD, mm. do you have the Jets going over or under nine and a half wins? He <laughs> <laughs> was a snake of my ass. I know why you're doing it. TD, are you writing these down? I don't know why you're doing this, Richie. <laughs> I'm testing you, bro. I'm seeing oh, if the consistency's there. I plead the fifth. No. <laughs> oh, <guys. laughs> I. Got to hear if bro. what TD has the Jets doing this year. Over, under, nine and a half. Look, he's looking at his notepads. Look at him. Who are your opponents next year? I didn't even look. I have 11 wins for the New York Jets. I'm not going mm. for it. I got Maybe. 11 wins for the Jets. And how many so do you have for the Dolphins? Six wins. Yeah, number six wins. Can I do uh, that? Wins exactly? I pushed on the Dolphins. The TD Finstock said the Jets are going to win 11 games this year. As yep. of right now. Which That's probably going to make you like a top five team in the league at that case. Which is crazy. He, uh, like three weeks ago, six I wins. I tell you team. now, six. on my depth chart, that um, on my chart, that'll make them okay, one team better, two teams well, tied with two and three. I'm sorry, guys. Um, it's okay. I respect your apology. Two, three, four, five. Number one rule: Never do math on the air. This is why. You're right. That'll make this them a top. Why. That'll make them a top five good. team compared to me. TD's telling the truth, folks. He's. You absolutely love it. The, I think y'all will max out at ten. Max out? Hey, I'll take ten wins, low key. Um, you're in the playoffs. You're in the playoffs. So yeah, bro, just get me in <laughs> the all, damn. That's all games. that matters. It don't matter how you end. It matters how you. Uh, well, let, let's say let's say it doesn't matter how you. You end the battle. You want to win the war, right? So, one hundred percent. I mean, the dance. Just get into the playoffs. Ten wins for the Dolphins, Colby. You got over or under? We're pushing. What were you guys last year? Eleven. You won eleven games exactly last year. How many yeah. Buffalo wins? Yeah, eleven. It was eleven. Eleven. All right. So, hmm. I'm thinking ten exactly. I'm thinking ten exactly. 
one mm. one game worse because I think I think injuries are going to plague the Dolphins a little bit this year. Ooh. Just, it's, just, it's just a sense that I'm getting is that y'all are going to have some some injury issues this year. Ooh. It's the injury bug for Miami. I Ooh. mean, I'll tell you what. Interesting. So their defense average age certainly has shot up. And so they have a lot of older players and players coming up. And <laughs> Ours is 10 wins, right, Dan? Uh, yeah, I'd push 10. I'd is push it 10, 10 on BetUS? Yes. It's 10 on BetUS, exactly. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with everybody watching. I had a push for the Dolphins at 10 wins right there with Kobe. Yep. Hey, let's go. Me and TD agree. Okay. 10 wins. Buffalo sitting at no 10 and a half wins. Buffalo, half. I got at nine wins this year. Nine mm-hmm. wins for the Bills. Colby, how about you? I feel like the, the Bills are such an interesting case. I feel like for me, it's going to depend on what they do for the in the draft. And if that they if they hit on the draft, I think they could be a 10-11 win team. But if they don't and they have like a, a real <laughs> mediocre draft, then I could see them peak in like 10-9 wins. Yeah. yeah. Nah. Uh me, I'm taking the over. <laughs> um i have the bills going 12 wins this year oh a lot of people just and a lot of people might and so a lot of people might say oh damn what about the defense and so we didn't have a defense for half of the year last year fools we didn't have a defense for half of the year all of them you were didn't have an offense half of the year either at half of the time so yeah no 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 it's funny right <laughs> <laughs> and so we only had defense for half of the year and then only had offense at half of the year I'm super optimistic with like this current roster already. I mean, obviously, we are about to do a three round mock draft, which is super exciting. I'm very excited to test these guys, see what they're thinking about here for a second. But um, as long as we go on ahead and hit on another wide receiver, I'm fine with all the moves that we have made at free agency so far. Now it's just time just to build up on some youth. I'm excited to see what Joe Brady can do with a brand new playbook and the further development of James Cook, Dalton Kincaid. It's a beautiful thing. But, boys. Look at that. We have a mock draft right here. I am doing three rounds, folks. And what I'm doing, I am going super slow. So if any of you are feeling froggy, okay, and you're like, you know what, Dan, I want to trade down. I want to trade up. You tell me. I'm going to pause that. I'm going to pause this ish. And we're going to talk a little bit. The draft, everybody is super. I'm ready. Wait, 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 wait. wait. That's that's wild. I was thinking about this. Can you go back? Same thing. Why? So we didn't even start the draft yet. Can you hit settings (laughs) on the top right? Yeah. Okay, what do you want? Yeah, can you put public versus PFF board in the middle? Right in the middle? Yeah, and can you put care for position in the middle? Okay. And draft needs all the way up? And if you guys disagree, we can. I just feel like this is more... So how do you typically have your settings for this? Um, This way. Um, Is it? Yeah, and um, randomness all the way down. Randomness all the way down. Well, okay. one one notch up, just one, just that where it was my bad. One yeah. notch up where randomness is. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of how I do mine. That way, it's a little more realistic and it goes off of what the team needs, like the ones we're not picking. So if I'm not seeing, like, okay, so if I don't Jay see Jimmy Taylor Williams go first overall, then I know that. It's gonna be <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be all right, yeah, guys. Like I said, three round mock draft and chat. Definitely feel free to stay involved. Once your team is ready to pick, we're going to get the analysis here from Colby the, oh, the second yeah, that are. his team is ready to pick. And then we're also going to ask the chat about who they want out of every single Patriots fan that is in here. And then, like I said, folks, let me know when you want to pause the draft. You say, Dan, hold up. I want to trade up. Okay. Talk to me. Anyway, without further ado, the 2024 AFC East Roundtable Mock Draft has begun. Let's go. Oh, that was quick. Oh, okay. So the board falls exactly how. They probably it's probably going to fall. Okay, so like like we said, ideally Drake May does fall to the Patriots. I think that he doesn't have as much hype going around him, which I don't understand. He's like this baby hybrid of like Josh Allen and Justin Herbert mixed into one. I think he's going to do really good at the NFL level. But the thing that scares me about Jaden Daniels is his inability. I don't want to say inability, but his lack of experience throwing between the numbers. The thing about the Patriots is that they love to operate in the middle of the field between the numbers. Jaden Daniels, I don't think that it's that he can't. A lot of people want to say he can't throw in the middle of the field. I think he was just never asked to do so. He was always throwing to his big perimeter outside receiver, so he was always throwing outside of the numbers. He's going to have to learn and adapt to a new style that the Patriots are playing in, which again is in the middle of the field between the numbers. 
Drake May is one of the best, if not the best quarterback throwing into the intermediate uh, section of the, uh, the, the field. So that's why I think Drake May fits the Patriots system a little bit better. But Jaden Daniels is the most athletic quarterback. Um, he, he, to me, is Lamar Jackson, but immediately coming into the league is going to be a better passer. I think that he's one of the, I think the top three quarterbacks are blue chip players. I know some people want to say JJ McCarthy is a blue chip quarterback. I'm not going to waste your time and get into that heated debate. I don't think he is. I think the top three quarterbacks are the only blue chip players in this year's draft. And Jaden Daniels definitely has the potential. I mean, he has, um, a really good deep ball too. And if you're a Patriots fan and you're trying to look for some more explosiveness, then Jaden Daniels is a guy who's going to give you that his ability to create off script because of how mobile he is, I think is also very, very valuable. The problem is that he's very undersized. He has the height for a quarterback, very small frame, has to learn how to slide, has to uh, avoid taking hits. That's his biggest problem. His arm strength is very, very weak too. But I think that comes down to the fact that he's a very undersized guy. Once he packs on some muscle, he packs on a little bit of weight. I think the arm strength is going to come with that. And so I think you have to go Jaden Daniels here okay you have the opportunity to go quarterback if you hit on a quarterback that excels your margin of error significantly if there's one position you have to hit on in the nfl it's the quarterback position and the patriots have the opportunity to do that right here so Jaden daniels easy Jaden daniels welcome to the new <laughs> england patriots he's six foot four he's like he's larger yeah, than he's a brother. tall dude he's just very very thin yeah yeah, yeah. he has to dude has to eat some protein. You have Marvin Harrison Jr. going next. Malik Neighbors to the Chargers. Joe Alt, very exciting tackle. Romo Dunze. Dude, Romo Dunze to the Titans? I mean, holy hell. I mean, how many receivers? I would, I would, oh, you know, swap the Giants. Swap Chicago. the Giants. Swap Brock. the Giants and the, uh, the, the Titans. <laughs> that makes more sense. But I love uh, that Brock Bowers went off the board. That's Brock hilarious. Bowers oh. is officially a Chicago Bear, folks. That's wow, BS. Richie and Joe Alt isn't there. This All this right. board e did not fall well for you. Now, easy, easy now, hey, trades. Easy trade now, down hey, right now. Ex dude, listen, easy you have trade quite, down. dude, you have quite a few options right here. Okay, easy you have the Denver trade down Broncos, my life. and so you have the temp. Uh, so you have the Denver Broncos for the twelfth overall. The the Raiders at thirteen, Saints at fourteen. What do you want to fleece the Broncos? For? I need a second round pick. That's what I'm looking for. Um, second round pick. Well, that's not. A second I don't round think I have one. Down. So here, we're down. not going to the no no Broncos. What about the Raiders? What about the Raiders? A little deeper. Not, nah, even what deeper. Are the Raiders trading up for deeper than that. You want deeper yeah. than that? You want, want like deeper. the Steelers at twenty? Nah, like uh, like who was at uh, like seventeen? And the Dolphins are interested. Oh, I think a team trading a trade? up here. A team trading up here would be a team that trading wants a quarterback. With the Jets? We're not trading with no Jets. Get out of here. Get get well, off. Who's that? Seventeen. I mean, dude, they traded up. Seventeen is Jacksonville Jaguars. Wait, or, Dan, or fourteen. Down. Fourteen. I like Dan, fourteen. Down a little bit on the I know team. what to do here. I know what to do. Fourteen here. of the Saints. They have a compensatory pick, so they yeah, want. Yeah. So give me fourteen and forty-five. All right. Mm -hmm. All for that. Mm -hmm. They'll probably get declined. You never know. <laughs> It's gonna. It's probably gonna get declined. It, All right, so throw in. Throw in our one thirty four. It's a little better, forty seven percent. All right, take that away. Throw in one eleven. Fifty seven percent. Same. Offer thing. it, baby. It ain't gonna work. Watch this. It's not Sometimes gonna work. you have to offer it. Too. It was accepted. Oh, it was accepted. Let's go. We none, move back four spots and we get. It's work. Hey, we move back four spots and we move up from the fourth round to the second round. Bingo. It's it's realistic too because Ooh. I mean, ideally, this is where the Saints are probably going to go, like a JJ McCarthy, because the the teams that are all right around each other, the Saints, the Vikings, the Broncos, the Raiders, they're all going to be teams that are potentially looking to draft a quarterback. So someone looking to hop one of those other teams makes a lot of sense there. All right. Mm. Well, let's see. Um, I can guarantee you that JJ McCarthy goes right here. Ready? I don't know. Look at that. Oh, 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 the same. Yeah. Dude. Uh, yeah, Who Quinion. got him the Saints? Yeah. Yo, listen. Qu Quinion sure, Mitchell, sure. so high on the dude. I'm oh, so glad oh, that he oh, no, no, Hey, Dan, where did Minnesota, do, they moved up? No, they stayed put. Okay. They tried to. They ended up going with uh, with Quinion Mitchell. He's he's the best corner in the draft. Are you, you kidding? Know. Yeah. Well, 
I mean, was either that or they'd reach for like a Michael Penix or something like that, or they'd reach for. Oh, I mean, who else my bad. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, because Hicks, just, I guess, yeah, they missed their JJ McCarthy. They missed. They them. did. They did indeed. All right, so the All Jets right. are back on the clock. Richie at fourteen needs our wide receiver, tackle, defensive line, and a safety. Richie better go Oluva Shanu here. Is in. So it's going to be between Troy Fatanu, okay. of Washington. Ooh. Here's because the guy. He's a, He's a versatile it reminds, it reminds me of a Elijah Vera Tucker guard tackle versatility and can kick outside to tackle, kick inside, and he could be that blue chip to sh- <laughs> get uh insurance behind Tyron Smith, behind AVT, who's coming off an Achilles of his own, behind all the boys. JC Latham, Olu Fashanu, those guys are still available. Part of me would even reach for uh, I'm not going to reach for him, but I really love Brian Thomas, but I'm not going to take him here. So I'm probably going to go Troy Fatanu uh, with my draft pick. He's one of my Ooh. favorite offensive linemen <clears throat> in this entire draft class, and I love him at pick 14 in a trade-down scenario. So give Over me Troy Fatanu too, huh? Michael Stipak yeah. is very excited with this pick. Okay, Jets fans, okay. sound, off. sound off in the chat and let us know if you are happy with the Jets trading down to 14, getting an additional second-round pick, and welcoming a brand-new tackle. Troy Fatanu, welcome. Sound off and let us Dang. know what you think right there. That's exactly Bang, what they are drafted. The Colts, ladies and gentlemen, take Terry on Arnold, corner out of Alabama. The Seahawks take Byron Murphy the second. Uh, definitely a defensive pick would make sense. <laughs> Cooper DeGene is going to the Jaguars. You have Fashanu is going to the I, Bengals. JC Latham be the best cornerback. Is going to the me. Rams. Nate Wiggins is off to the Ooh. Steelers. And we know for- we know what uh what TD's about to do. Look where we're at right now. Jackson Powers uh, Johnson. Look where we're at right you now, folks. We have tell me 29 teams are willing to trade. 29 teams are willing to trade down with you, bro. That they, is insane. They want. Would you like to look at some of the players available and then also shop? Shop yeah, these yeah, yeah, offers? yeah. Scroll, scroll a little bit. Scroll a little bit. Okay. So you have, so you have, yeah. the, so you have you Johnny Newton, who's a solid you defensive can, line, but needs apparently, according to PFF, tight end, offensive line, and defensive line. No. Have, Jackson, have Jackson Powers Johnson at center is available. He's staring just in scroll, the face. Just scroll down about 10 spaces. Keep going. Just keep going. I feel like the Eagles yeah. will go Jackson Powers. Keep Johnson. going. Just keep going. Keep going. Mm-hmm. All right. Go back up. Okay. Go back the other way. Yeah. yeah please reach for Penix. That'll be mm-hmm. glorious. Keep going. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Trade. All right. Trade. Okay. All right. So let's see what spot looks right. good for you. So the Cowboys at right. 24, Packers 25, Bucks 26. I, I want to go. I want to go to 31 or 32. 30, no, 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 no. Click on the 31. teams. So San Francisco or Kansas City? Let's check it out. Okay. So yeah. San Francisco. Is, is Kansas City on the board? Kansas City. No, this is San Francisco. I could put Kansas City at 32. So swap up to 32, and you could potentially yeah. get a, uh, what else do you want from them? Give me 32. Okay. Give me 64. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. uh, give me 131. A 59% chance of being accepted. Should we offer? Let's go. Offer it. It is accepted. That's so second it, and a, what a third, see, second and third. It is accepted, fine, folks. And you know what, bro? Thank you for that because you just gave the Kansas City Chiefs fucking Brian Thomas Jr. Hey, I don't know hey, that that's just the white buffalo eye. We ain't worried about that. No, never mind. <laughs> they took Latou, baby. Lato, 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 bro. Brian Thomas Jr. Like, goes to the Eagles. He has major injury concerns. That's a dumb move. You have giant Idiots. Seriously. Graham Barton tackle is going to Green Bay. You have the Jackson champion. Powers Johnson. That makes a ton of sense for them. Actually. He fell. Oh. And then A.D. Mitchell. Who cares Ooh. about this team that's on? Ooh. Dan's about to go wide receiver here. I know who he's taking. You already know. He's about to go what? Don't Thomas. say Coleman, dude. If you go Coleman. No, he's I'm going not. Thomas, bro. He's available. I'm not. Listen. Okay, this is my thing. I said that I would feel terrible about reaching for a receiver at 28 if A.D. Mitchell and Brian Thomas Jr. were gone. So when it comes down into it, I'm going to check out the receivers. Some people like Lab McConkey. I'm okay with it. Troy Franklin, that would be a reach. Roma Wilson, not a fit. Um, I love Xavier Leggett. 
I'm going to see if I can hold off with him in the second, the if possible. And then I'll tell you what else I could do. Tyler Newbin's safety is certainly interesting right Ooh. here. Um, out of Minnesota, absolute dog, right? Like when it comes into it, solid coverage grade. I like him a hell of a lot better than Mike Edwards. I like Tyler Newbin quite a bit. I could potentially trade down, but that Tyler Newbin player is just too good. Let me check out defensive tackle as well. You have, you have Braden Fisk. I like him, but he's more of a second rounder guy. I'll tell you what, listen. Is that best available right now? This is best available. So safety with Tyler Newbin is the best possible option for me. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, I'm going to roll the dice in the second, and I'm not reaching for a receiver. I am drafting Tyler oh. Newbin, safety out of Minnesota. Fits the mold. Solid coverage, 90.1. Run defense is somewhat They don't have Boyer no more. Six foot two. Tyler Newbin, welcome to the Buffalo Bills. Switch up the tempo on him, Dan. Okay, okay. Switch it on up, baby. Switch Trash. it on up. I'm going Tyler Newbin. Kool-Aid no McKinstry. Kool-Aid with. Thank you. TJ Tampa. All right, we have Kool-Aid McKinstry. We have TJ Tampa off of the board. Kool-Aid, the best name in the draft. Oh, dude, my Chick-fil-A milkshake is here. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and he's running it. Oh, I can't oh. even run it. My milkshake, right? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> anyway, <awesome. laughs> anyway. Oh, all right, bro. Tight end offensive line, defensive line, 32nd overall pick, Miami all Dolphins. Right. Scroll down, scroll board. down. Let's see what we got. All right, keep going. Stop. Oh, go back, go back, go back, go back. Let me see. Just go up go, go, back. go back up. Go back up. All right, Zach Frazier, baby. I knew his Zach Frazier is center out of West Virginia. <laughs> Let's see exactly who's going to the Dolphins, baby. Run block 73.2, pass block grade 77.9, pretty elite in zone and in gap. The guy standing Let's six go! three, 310. <laughs> Frazier's background and build give him a high floor as a scheme versatile center who is worthy of an early uh, day two, baby. Zach Frazier, welcome to the Miami. And I got the fifth year option. And I got the fifth year option. Richie that was a good deal. already nervous. Richie Ooh, already I, nervous. I, I, <laughs> Richie's I already got our center, bro. We have the, the best center in the best rookie center in the league last year. We're good. Mm -mm. You're late to the party. We already got our center. Damn. Damn, baby. All right. The Patriots. Hey, I'll trade up. I'll trade up with you, New England. I'm interested. Where are you guys? I ain't trading nobody in my division. So the Jets are actually yeah. interested in trading up. And so the Jets are actually interested in trading up. Turn them down, Kobe. Turn them down. That's the vision, Kobe. Turn them down, Kobe. Yeah, that, 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 I can flip this entire draft. Really I can blow people's minds with what I'm about to do. And people are not going to like this, by the way. Jets fans are going to hate me if I do this. Well, no, He's going to get Fisk. Dan, can you see who's on the uh, for, for the tackles? Offensive tackles. Let's take a look. Offensive Richie tackle. want a quarterback. Richie want a quarterback. <laughs> I know it. Richie trying to get Bo Nix, y'all. I know it already, Richie. Jordan Moore getting Casey. They're not going to be mad. Why would they be mad, Richie? They, that should make them excited to have a young guy I, behind them. I know my Jets fan base. <laughs> I know. Do, do, do. All right, so I think that the Patriots, they do want to compile some more draft picks. They do have 19 roster spots open, and I think it's going to be filled between the draft, and it's going to be filled between UDFAs. So I think they're going to want to trade down. If they're not going to do it in the first, then they're definitely, I think, going to do it between the second and the third. So I think doing it here in the second, trying to pick up maybe another third or fourth, makes a lot of sense. I know we they have the commander me. calling. I don't want they to trade two down. I don't want to trade two down here. Okay. So the um, commanders are in. What do you mean two down? What do you mean two down? Like, uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's a player, the player I'm targeting. There's a player that I'm targeting. And I think if I trade down, I can compile some draft picks, but I don't want to trade too far down to where I miss out on tackle completely. Where do you think he is? Where do you think he'll land? What what pick are you willing to go down to? Early to mid 40s. All right. Hey, put, 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 just click on the drop down, Dan. Yeah, click yeah, on. If I have the drop down, it's just not showing up. So, Colby, oh, 36, 37, 38, 39, 41, 43, 44, 45, which is the Jets, 46, 
40. Where's Miami? 50. Uh, Miami has didn't we pick up offered the 55th overall? So the 55th overall they've offered to trade up. No. Colby 36, 37, 38, 39, 41, 43. Basically, every single team with the exception of the 40th overall pick. So you said 41. Yep. So this actually could make a lot of sense. This could make a lot of sense between the Packers and the Patriots because Elliot Wolf has a lot of ties back to Green Bay. His dad, uh, Ron Wolf, was actually the general <laughs> manager uh, for for years there in Green Bay, which kind of brought them that Super Bowl and that next generation. So I could definitely see them making a trade here. The Patriots' second round pick is worth 560 points. Green Bay is worth 490. So that's what. Do some quick math. That's like 70 points. So mm -hmm. realistically, the Patriots could get. See where Green Bay is here. Uh, they might be able to get like a a third, fourth. They, can can I mean if they, if they if throw a third in there and see what they say? Okay, so a third or... is a fifty six percent <laughs> chance. A fourth would be sixty five. So let's try the third. Let's try the third. Offer the trade. It was accepted. Right. Okay. Oh, it was accepted. Right. Fifty more, baby. Hey, look, hey, I, I was the like Jets it. pick. Like you got it. the Jets pick. We pick up an extra third round pick and we yeah, trade Ron down, not too far down. I like it. I like it. This is hilarious, bro. Don't I, take I, my I, guy, bro. Don't take my guy. I don't think I see the chat, but Jets fans are freaking out on who Why? I'm. Because I teased something and they're like, Richie, you better not. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Why? Here we go, Bo Nix. <laughs> he wants to. That's why he wants it. He wants it at war right now. All right. <laughs> We got right, the New England Patriots so, on the clock again. Okay, so you, go, uh, go you want an offensive tackle. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Bro, we could have even traded down again. Both tackles are still here. Jordan Morgan and Kingsley, Kingsley. Sumatia. I love both of these guys. The thing is, is that I'm actually going to go Kingsley Sua Matia here. This I is agree. a guy that I'm a big, big fan of. The Patriots just had a top 30 visit with him. He has versatility at left tackle and right tackle. He's ambidextrous. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know what that means, he's right-handed and left-handed, which is very important in terms of your hand placement, playing on the left offensive and line. Right and he tackle. said that he's very, very comfortable playing both right tackle and left tackle. The Patriots oh, could need either or. So the, the, the likelihood of them hitting on a guy that can – Confidently play both left tackle and right tackle is significantly higher. I like Jordan Morgan. He his arm length is a little undersized. That's why there's some concerns if he's going to be a guard or tackle at the, at the next level. So just going with the fact that the Patriots also just had a top 30 visit, gotta go Kingsley Suamatia. I love Kingsley Kingsley Su pick. Kingsley Suamatia. Hell of a pick. Welcome to the New England Patriots. Let's go. And the Texans uh -oh, take Max Straw Jr. cornerback. Braden Fisk goes off the board to the Falcons. Bo Nix is oh, a Raider. Raiders. Bo Nix is a Raider. That makes so much sense. Yo, Richie, was that your pick, bro? I don't know. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's see. Right, we'll let's see. All right. All right. Receiver, Go to wide receivers right away, Dan. Who, who are my receivers? Let's trade, Richie. I'll give you a profit. Okay, well, I'm I'm open for business. Let's go. Let's go. Are you a profit? No way. I'm definitely Miami looking at Dolphins. a wide receiver right now, though. I like those. Okay. okay, Miami Dolphins are willing. They want to trade up to 45. What do you want to fleece the Dolphins? Yeah, but, but the problem with this draft is this is a three-round mock. So, like, I don't care about fourth, fifth, sixth rounders. Yeah, you know? I know that. I know that. All right. Um. Yeah, we got we got to give up – Um. Next year's third rounder. I right, forget it. No, I'm on. I'm right, no, right, I, right. I traded right, down. Richie. I got this. All right. All right. All right. Gosh, <laughs> man. Why you got to be so. <laughs> hey, this is a prize pick. I see who you're looking to get. <laughs> man, Rich, you a snake. That's why I hate the Jets. <laughs> You've been pulling me out this whole time. You literally exposed my whole draft plan to the whole world. Um, Nah, but I, I know who I want immediately. Scroll down a little bit from the wide receivers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm definitely cool. targeting right here, it's my man, Ricky. Scroll up. Ricky? Ricky Purcell. Ricky Pearsall? Mm, I feel like he would be a really good compliment for what we're doing over here. Another playmaker for the New York Jets, adding with Aaron Rodgers and what Mike Will and Garrett Wilson is oh. doing. I love this pick. Wow. He's like an Adam Thielen type player. 
Ricky like, Pierce he's gonna, style. He's not going to do much deep for you, but he's a guy that's going to be a, a bigger slot guy. Could play outside a little bit, but is a big possession receiver. Won't give you much on the field, but a big <laughs> Michael, <laughs> Michael Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bennett goes to the. Hey, listen. Um, we going to sweep the Jets, and that's why. So that's the dude, why. Like, um, so Mills had a hell of a pro day. So Mills had a hell of a pro day. Hey, you definitely don't sleep on him. Jets fans, you're very you should be very fortunate the Raiders took Ponix before if they was available at 48, bro. Yeah, oh, I man. know you would have. This is easy, Dan Rook. Rook or or Horo. I already got him right there. Rook or Hor Horo, yeah. baby. Miami He's Christian Dolan. Wilkins replacement, That's baby. Right. That's right. We got Come Come on. On. we got Christian Wilkins replacement. We eat. Super the Bowl. damn the damn Cowboys took the one receiver Xavier. I wanted, and that was Xavier. Xavier. Get. Okay, so safety is taken care of. I'm going to take a look at wide receiver. Fucking A. I like Javon Baker a lot. No, you gonna... stay away, Dan. <laughs> hey, oh my <laughs> I like Javon Baker, but I'm not going to go with that. Okay, listen, let's Bro, go. Javon Defense Baker line. makes so much sense if you move on from Stephon Diggs. That's like your Stephon Diggs replacement. Hogue's a limited route runner, but he's also one of the best go up and get a contested catch receivers. I wouldn't like Polk. Think of Jalen like... Polk as Jacoby Myers. Chris Jenkins as well, 82.7. Let me see what we got right here. Dude, I am so pissed that that the Cowboys took Leggett. What the hell you oh, need Leggett yeah. for? Bro? Right before you too, dude. dude right before you. You, you should have seen that happen. <laughs> you should have seen that one coming. Should have traded up, Dan. Should have traded up. Oh, the Buffalo Bills draft is pretty ass. <laughs> it is pretty ass. I love this Jets draft. Dude, I'm actually very upset with this draft already, but the chat's gonna have to tell us who had the best draft at the end. Well, it's well, three not me. It's not me already. Jalen Polk out of Washington. Chat. It's how do you feel about Jalen Polk? Damn cowboy, Joe. Chris Jenkins, like, there's some receivers I like in the third that I think I would be okay with waiting for, like my dude right here. I want Javon Baker, if anything. Reach for him now. You won't. <laughs> Should I reach for him? I don't know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big no, reach from like? where you are right now. Um, He's like a projected third to fourth. I'm going to trade down. I'm going to trade down. Ooh. Give me. I'll go into the. Hit that like button, folks, if you're enjoying the mock draft, our first mock draft of the show. And so I got to go before the Patriots. <laughs> no, you don't. 67th, 60. Don't it. Give me the 78th. No, they won't take that. <laughs> <laughs> Throw 78 in. Nah, you go, go 78 and then like i'll give him like yeah dude dude fuck it it's a three it's yeah it's this is round. what i mean that's like integrity yeah, hold on hold on dan you're trying to move out yeah because like there's like really nobody that like i'm targeting I i'm at 65 man what's up let's do business let's do business you're at 64 you third round pick a so third trying to trade with the individual rival significantly td yeah yeah we will man what are you talking about we should have done a seven round. I got a third round pick. I got a third round pick um next year. I want to give cares? up. cares? <laughs> Cuz we're going to have three third rounders next year. Two compared uh, to we, more regular. I mean, we could do a seven like I mean, we could do a seven round after this. No, I, I, I like the threes though. I like the threes. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know no one past the third oh, round. Oh, listen. What by the time we get the fifth round him I don't take know it, nothing God. about him. All right, yeah. you know what? Listen. Hey, well, I'm we better get to know these specific prospects because we did not even announce what's happened in this for the draft, what we're doing yet. But we'll we'll, we'll see that. Chris, <laughs> I'm going Chris Jenkins, defensive coverage. lineman. Damn. Oh, that's a good I one, Dan. Chris Jenkins. And so we went defense. And listen, I know a lot of people are upset about it, but listen – don't lie to yourself. You know that this would totally be a Brandon Bean draft, and we would be punching holes in our wall. All right? 
defense back to back in the first and second, and he reaches for a receiver in the third or something. TD, the Dolphins, 64th overall pick. Scroll I this down. Is the last pick of the draft. Defensive okay. heavy draft for you guys. Damn. Scroll down there. Take Spencer Rattler. No. They, <laughs> they killed me on Bleacher Report for doing that. No way. <laughs> the, <laughs> chat, the chat was they like, what you, bro? <laughs> Spencer Rattler? <laughs> oh, they destroyed me. All right, go up. Let's trade. Wow. Talk about trades after trades after trades. All right. We so don't have any third and fourth round picks, the Dolphins. You have 66, 67, 68, 69, That's 70, 71, um, 73. Uh, let me – Um, I just want to go down like six spots. So around 71. Uh, We got 70, the Giants, or the Jets at 72. Let's go Giants. I don't like the Jets. Yeah, we wouldn't have done business with you anyway, bums. I, I, I know that. All right, so the Miami Dolphins are swapping picks with the Giants at 64 and 70. They have a 107th pick? 107. Damn. That's not even in the third. It's so, fine. Like, that's not going to work for you. But it's a move I, I would rather make, though, for okay. the team. Um, okay, give, cool. me, give me 107. Okay. And take take one forty one off, and give them one fifty eight of ours. All right. No, no, no. Go to one. Wow, go to wow. 80, you do like one eighty four. Go to one eighty four 184 instead. She damn ready to pull a trigger. She like good. You deal. might be able to do one ninety eight too. One ninety eight. Yeah. So that's a sixty two percent chance. Damn. Of yeah, let's do it. You Offer trade. All the capital. They accepted. They accepted. Right, cool. Well, they luckily, do. we're not even using those picks, so. I'm just saying the Dolphins don't have a third and fourth this year. Just strategically, that's something we need to do to get in there, the, those mid rounds. Break really enjoy that milkshake. Oh, oh you no way! Ah, oh, you're an ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving them a second. Hey, you're cheating, bro. You're literally Dan's cheating. He's giving up a second I, round pick next year. I told you I'm trading up, dude. Hold on. Oh, hold a, on. Sec a second next year for this? Wow. You better hope he pans out if you've given up a second and a third, technically. Uh all right, all right, all right. You know what, dude? What else? Dude, a second wouldn't even work for what? Ah, oh, fuck it. Whatever. Go ahead, dude. Break my heart, man. Imagine they accepted it. All right. So, Dan, I'm going to need you to hit up the wide receiver position for me just a little just a little quick. Um, You know, Dan, while you're at it, can you add tight ends to that, too? Okay, good. Yeah, most of that. Dude, dude. dude <laughs> most look at, dude, <laughs> dude, look at my boy Eric All out of Iowa. 103rd, uh, dude. Dude, dude, dude. Iowa tight ends, pick. though, they be hitting. <sighs> All right. All right. So I honestly, I think I think there's a lot of good options for the Patriots at wide receiver here. Uh, you know, Javon Baker, Johnny Wilson to me is an interesting prospect. He's like six foot seven. He, he'll immediately come in and be like the tallest wide receiver in the National Football League. Like this dude is an absolute unit. Catch radius is insane, but his drop percentage is concerning, and he doesn't have a good contested catch rate. He, he just he, the, the, the they're nice intangibles that he just has to put together. I think he's more of a project guy, so I'm not gonna go Johnny Wilson here. I've heard the idea though of going Johnny Wilson and converting him to tight end. I think that's an interesting thought though. So I like Brendan Rice too. I think Brendan Rice is more of a late third rounder to maybe like early fourth. So you know, it, it's really a two for one special. I get my wide receiver one, but I also get to break an in-division rival's heart in the Buffalo Bills. Because, baby, I'm going to be looking at Javon Baker, wide receiver. Ah, this guy, this guy is a man right here, okay? I He's got a, a, a great catch radius, outside versatility. He's a good technician, but he also is very good at contested catch situations, too. They, I, I've heard Patriots fans try to throw out like a, um, like a Stephon Diggs. His ceiling would be a Stephon Diggs. I don't see that comparison as well as other people do. But if he does hit his, like, high mark ceiling, I could see a Stephon Diggs. Uh, Patriots also had a top 30 visit with him. He was their first top 30 visit. So I think that's something to uh, to, to to also take into account. So I love it. I love it. 
so my dream draft, right? Like my dream draft for the Bills was taking AD Mitchell in the first and then double dipping at wide receiver and taking Javon Baker in the third. That has been my dream. So it's between draft. it's between the Pats and the Bills. Between the it's, Pats and the Bills, it's gonna it's get it. The Pats and the Bills for the guy. The Miami <laughs> Dolphins are back on the clock after trading on down with the New York Giants. TD. What do you got, man? Tight end, offensive line, defensive lines seem to be necessities. I can go ahead and just put all those positions on the board for you. Go ahead and take a look. You have offensive tackles. You, you, go in. What's yeah. that? you can scroll down from here. And then D-line as well. Okay. No, I'm all right. You have Brandon um, Dorlitz. You have Tavondre Sweat, who I love Tavondre Sweat. Blake Fisher, Patrick Paul. Mm. Christian Mahogany, Cedric Van Pran, center out of Georgia. Mason McCormick, by the way, if y'all haven't seen this dude, this would definitely be a reach in the third, but I love this dude. This a guy guard. is going to be an elite guard in the league, and the only reason that he's not more hype is because he went to South Dakota State. Yeah. And he was a jackrabbit, okay? But anyway, talk to me. <laughs> what player um, are you looking for? Um, can you um click on Blake Fisher for me? Let me make sure this is the same guy. Blake Fisher, Notre well, Dame. I, I like Blake Fisher at tackle. Blake Fisher's like a, a good I know. prospect um, in the third round. I just Fisher don't like the, him to a senior year. Fisher has the power to play at the pro level, but needs to get quicker to his landmarks. He also needs to be more patient and balanced in his strikes to avoid being susceptible to NFL level speed rushers. All right, and, go out of there. I, I know who I'm drafting. I'm let me stop playing. All right, go to the top. Um, to Vondre Sweat. Tavondre Sweat, wonderful pick. Two Ab defensive linemen. Absolutely. Two interior defensive interior. linemen. Interior. Dude, big dude, absolutely massive. He's not going to be your pass rush guy, but I guarantee you he's going to eat up about as many blocks as humanly possible. Yeah. So whoever it, is his running a, mate. A, he, a true, a true, um, a true nose tackle. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, most definitely, man. And so the rest of your D-line will eat as long as he develops correctly. The New York Jets are at 72. Wide receiver tackle, defensive line, and safety. We have your boy Spencer Rattler standing at the face right now. Richie? Dan, let me teach you a trick. Can you just go to the uh, the side of the window and kind of just shrink the window? <laughs> now hit the X button. Oh, yeah, there we go. See how it's changing on? Nice. It kind of fills it out a little better. Nice. Just a little tidbit of uh, producing. All right. What'd you what did he fill out? Oh, oh he filled it out too much. There we go. Okay. Go. So the thing here is, you know, I found a new uh, quarterback crush, but it's a oh, reach God. to take him right here. So Ooh, who is it? I like him more in the fourth round and the fifth round, if anything. Who's available, though? Scroll down. So it's definitely not Spencer Rattler. I mean, I do like Spencer Rattler. I know he's polarizing, and if I take Spencer Rattler, half the fan base is going to hate me. The other half is going to say yes. Um, they man, it's so hard to please Jets fans. You guys have no idea. Um, Brandon Dorless. Blake Corum. What's up, Blake? I love Blake Corum, but he's got a lot of tread on his tires. Michigan ran him through the freaking ground, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah but you know who else did? We don't need uh, a running back, so I mean, we do. But Take Johnny Wilson. Dude, take Johnny Wilson. Convert him to tight end. There you go. Hmm. Six foot seven. Oh, man. Jets Nation, where do you where do you uh want the Jets to go here? So far, we have Troy Fatanu, Ricky Parcel, uh Purcell as our two draft picks. I would love a quarterback. Go to quarterback. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I want to invest in the damn future. Michael Pratt? Michael Pratt. I like him better than Spencer. You like Pratt better than Rattler? Yep. I, I'll tell you what, dude. Don't sleep on Joe Milton. I ain't gonna lie. I like Joe Milton too, though. Uh -oh, Joe Dan Milton is from day throw. Throw. I got Dan issues Dan with Joe Milton, throw. but compared to these guys, I actually like him. Joe Milton has an insane arm, Travis. He's a Madden player, bro. He's a Madden player. He's not an NFL player because yeah. he's not gonna be able to come in and just simply pass the ball five yards. He can throw the ball like just platformed like 80 yards. He ain't going to be able to just toss a ball five Jordan yards. Jordan Travis. You are drafting jo – ladies and gentlemen, you heard it hey, here first. Hey, the hey. New York Jets. Wait, I don't know. Am I? I'm just – now hear me out on Jordan Travis. Coming off an, an injury, right? So the Jets could hypothetically draft Jordan Travis and put him on IR so we can roll with two quarterbacks 
and he's a fresh a red shirt year sitting and learning behind Aaron Rodgers and Tyrod Taylor. But this is a reach, right? Because I want to get Travis. This is, this is not a seven round mock. This is a three round mock. So now I'm like kind of all over the place. I want to get Jordan Travis in the fourth or fifth, but we're not going that far. So I'm like debating. I'm just like reaching just to get him on, on here. Um, so it doesn't make sense from a reach standpoint. So I guess I shouldn't do it. Hey, Richie, What's Zach that? Wilson's better than Jordan Travis. What? Zach Wilson's better than him. Um, hmm. Interesting. Uh, I mean, the guy was literally in the Heisman race before he went down. Zach Wilson never sniffed the Heisman Trophy. But you know who won the Heisman? No, I never. Patriot, never heard Patriots' of new starting quarterback. <laughs> oh man, Mac Jones. Jets no. fans, where He's where would up. you go right now, Jets Nation? Hear me out because there's a lot of options here. King Lowski said, "TV, shut up." <laughs> yeah, Brandon Dorless. Have Austin Booker and Edge out of Kansas. Yeah, Jets fans have the biggest fear in the world that now we miss out on Jadavion Clowney. We're drafting an edge early. I saw that today, and I, I immediately thought of you, Richie. I was like, ah. <laughs> so there's this one edge rusher that I really like, but he's but he's he's not worth taking until what wide receivers are about no, no, no. that double down. This, this dude I fucking love. His name's Javon, Javon Solomon out of Troy. Yeah, he's dude, a... dude had 17 sacks last What's year. What's his pass rush win rate? Let's take a look. Curiosity. Pass rush win rate 17.1. 17.1. True pass set grade is 91. Pass rush. We're we're not taking an edge. That's that's not happening. Um, But so for for Jets fans that don't know, we we traded down. We got Troy Fatano in the first and then Ricky Purcell in the second. And now we're at the final pick of this three round mock. You know, my heart wants to go with the quarterback and reach. um, But it's not the smart thing to do. So I don't know if I want to just have some fun because it's a mock draft. You know, we do need a safety. If there's one hole on this roster that can improve, it's definitely the safety position. Um, and there's a there's some good solid, safeties solid right safeties. Here. Solid safeties right here. A lot of good safeties. And so a lot of these dudes' draft stock has plummeted as of late. I love Cole Bishop, but he's a fourth guy. He's out of Utah. And I also love Kalen Bullock out of USC. Oh, tough pick man. Here for Richie, huh? It is tough. I mean, the clock is about to expire. Cameron Kitchens is definitely a guy that I feel like would fill it exactly what this Jets team's looking for. A nice ball hawking safety. That can I mean, this guy is a absolute ball hawk. Um, so I might just go what's best for the team instead of the splashiness. We already got our offensive line the first round. We got our playmaker in the second round. It's time to add to the defense, maybe another piece to the secondary. I'll take Cameron Kitchens. Cameron Kitchens, welcome to the New York Jets. He is really good. I like him a lot. It's, it's not a flashy pick, Jets Nation. But hey, we got our offensive line. We got our wide receiver. If we were going past the third round, I'd definitely target Jordan Travis. Spencer Rattler to the Broncos. Ooh. Spencer Rattler to the Broncos, baby. Ooh. Look at that, man. Sean Payton's about to turn him into Pat Mahomes 2.0, baby. <laughs> Johnny Wilson went to the Bengals. Blake Corum to the That's Seattle really Seahawks. Max Melton, cornerback out of Rutgers, is going to the Colts. That's such a The Colts Dolphins stick. forfeited a pick? Yeah. Michael, was that from last year? It was from the tampering. Cheaters. <laughs> Andrew yeah, Phillips, funny, cornerback. Man. Malachi, <laughs> dude, Malachi Corley was also somebody that I was that I do like quite a bit. The Patriots are on the board. A quarterback, a wide receiver, have been taken thus far. And guess what, my friend? You have a tackle and you have an edge rusher need. As you can see, we can go ahead and put those on the board, unless you are wanting to be obscure and look so for Dan, anybody else. Talk Dan, to- I'm actually going to need you to go. I'm going to need you to go and hit up tight end, and I'm going to need you to hit up oh. cornerback. Tight end and corner, dude. Yeah, tight end and cornerback. This All stuff right, ain't going to help y'all win no game. No, yeah, Bernardo no. Green is the first one. He has a 91 rank. Jerry on Jones, both of the Florida State <laughs> oh. TVs are on top. You have Eric All out of Iowa. You have DJ James, Auburn, Chris Abrams, Drain, Kate Stover. Stover. 
113. And then afterwards, I'd probably consider that to be a reach. Ooh, so you know what? The, it, it's a little tough. It's a little tough because of PFF's like rankings. A lot of times PFF ranks differently than like everybody else does. Um, so the guy that I actually like for the Patriots and – I don't know realistically where he's going to go from where PFF has him mocked to where the rest of the NFL in reality is going to have him mocked. But I like Theo Johnson for the Patriots, but I think that this is too early to grab Theo Johnson. Theo Johnson to me is like tight end three realistically out of the entire draft class. If you haven't looked at Theo Johnson yet, look at Theo Johnson from Penn State. This dude is huge, crazy catch radius, great blocker. He has to develop a little bit more, but he has such potential at being a dual threat tight end i do think that this is too early to grab a tight end though for the patriots because that guy is going to be immediately tight end three he's immediately going to sit this upcoming season so i think we can wait a little bit i'm actually going to solidify the patriots secondary right now it's very underrated but new england does need some help at cornerback you have christian gonzalez who you drafted in the first round last year who proved that look And the three, four games he played, he has the potential to be an absolute stud. But we have to see him play at that level for an entire season. We also have to see him come back from now a season-ending injury. Not just that, but you have Marcus Jones, a 5'8 cornerback who's mainly a special teamer, who's also coming off a season-ending injury. He's not going to play a perimeter role for you. And then Jonathan Jones, who's over 30 years old now, has over a $12 million cap hit this upcoming season. He's 5'10". He's one of the best slot cornerbacks in the league. Over the last couple of years, had to play an outside role. That's not where he thrives. If I'm the Patriots, I want to get this team back to putting players in the positions that they succeed in. Michael Omanu from right tackle, at some point, get him back to right guard. He's locked down there. Get Jonathan Jones back into slot cornerback. The Patriots need size at corner, and they need a guy opposite of Christian Gonzalez that can start for them. So for me, I'm going Cam freaking Hart. Cam Hart stood out at the combine. Cam Hart stood out at the senior bowl. He was probably the biggest winner. He's like a six foot one, six foot two cornerback who is a true outside corner. I really, really like him. And it might seem early for the Patriots to grab him here. Like PFF isn't going to grade this very well for New England, but he's very well against the pass, uh, does very well against the pass, very, very good against the run, a well rounded cornerback that the Patriots like. And he is projected to be a third round to second round cornerback taken off after how he's performed and measured this offseason so i'm actually going to go defense here and go cam hart cam hart welcome it's not to- a reach it's not a reach i know people are going to to say that in in the comments you cannot take what pff says specifically with their rankings and say this is a reach or this is not a reach okay <laughs> pff is just doing their own specific rankings it's not what nfl teams are saying so you have to remember that three wins <laughs> you crazy you crazy if we get three wins what are you doing six the buffalo Square. bills do not Square. have a third round pick good so buffalo bills are going to attempt and trade up with the san francisco 49ers let's see what we got 128 hold on how are you stopping it in doing that yeah you can pause it right trade up. he's hmm. cheating bro i see i see what you mean richie that's what I'm saying. Like, he has the advantage. We don't. Mm. Hey, listen. I told you all that y'all can go on ahead and tell me to pause anytime you want to trade up. I'm going to go into offer the trade. Buffalo Bills have traded back on up into the third round. What do we have? Let's see. I saw that Brennan Rice went off the board. I'm a little upset about that. Uh, Bills fans are going to fucking hate this draft. I'm not even going to lie to you, dude. Um, I like Luke McCaffrey, but at 181, I'm not even sure about that dude, he's six foot two. I'd be okay with him. Uh, Malik Washington is very, very good. I like him, but he's five foot eight. He's a smaller receiver. We need a boundary guy. Jacob Cowing, not so much. Same short king. He's five foot 11. Um, Anaya Smith out of Texas AM, five foot 10. So I just have a bunch of short kings right here, folks. Oh, God, dude. Listen, this is like the worst possible draft I think anybody could have ever guessed for. Get used to it, bro. I mean, like, get prepared, um, you know? Like- this, I mean, dude, dude, listen, this is not what's happening with the Buffalo Bills. But if if this was me and I traded up, I totally would have went with Brendan Rice, but I wasn't fast enough out of USC. I don't want any shorter receivers. Um, I'll take Mason McCormick. 
solid guard. All right, pause it, dude. Pause it. Pause it. Okay. Miami Dolphins. You want to yeah. trade up, man? What do you want, dude? Yeah. 107. Yeah, you know, trade up with 96. What are you willing to give the Jags? Um, Go to a third rounder next year. Third rounder next year. Right there, yeah. There you go. Nope, never mind. Go to four. They take Go to it. five. I forgot I already gave him a third. 51% <laughs> chance. And oh. put and throw um Chicago's seventh rounder in there. All right. No, oh. the other oh, Boy, yeah, I'm, I'm going to run it next time, man. It's, it's, I'm going to run it. It's that Chick fil A shake, bro. All I'm listening yeah, to is just, like lips. Yes, I'm having a nightmare man. with my picks, Mike. I'm having an absolute right. nightmare, bro. This is the worst possible draft I ever could have. <laughs> right there at the top of the board, Christian Mahogany. Christian Mahogany, guard, Boston College, folks. Let's see who the Dolphins are getting. Six foot three, 322 pounds, absolute unit. Mahogany is a guard only and a powerful run blocker with inconsistencies in the passing game. He projects into a rotational and potential starting role for a team that is heavier in the run game and mostly man slash gap concepts. All right, Christian Mahogany, welcome to the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, Got to get him ready for the quarterback, the new quarterback. Also the interior of the O-line, that's for sure. And, and my friends, I think that's going to have to do it for the AFC's roundtable. Let's go. Drafts, baby. All right, let's, let's, let's go recap. ahead and run down. Recap, the Patriots ended up taking Jaden Daniels, third overall, folks. Super excited about that situation. They don't have we our had greens. The, now, uh, no, not when it's uh, – yeah, not when it's multiple teams. Then well, Troy – Fatanu is going over to the Jets after a Bang! trade down. After a trade down, uh, the Miami Dolphins, my friends, traded down as well. But the Buffalo Bills took Tyler Newbin's safety out of Minnesota. And then the Miami Dolphins ended up selecting Zach Frazier. Center. I wish they gave me the whole thing. Me too. They only do the first round. Oh, full results. Oh, wait. There we go. There we go. We had all that. You had Troy Fontenot over to the Jets. Bills took Tyler Newbin. Zach Frazier over to the Miami Dolphins. Second round, Kingsley Sumatia, solid yes, pick, sir. tackle, solidifying the offensive line. Ricky Pearsall for the Jets at 45. Trash. Miami Dolphins took Rook or Horo Horo. And then Chris Jenkins, defensive lineman, Michigan, liked him. I was pissed because I saw all of the wide receivers I wanted more than anything disappear before my eyes. And then scrolling <laughs> down to the third, Javon Baker, another wide receiver, disappeared before my eyes. He is gone. Then Tavondre Sweat over to the Miami Dolphins. Cameron Kinchins to the New York Jets. And last but not least, well, excuse me, the Pats end up getting Cam Hart from what they were trading down in the quarterback. And the Buffalo Bills got Mason McCormick, a guard out of South Dakota State, my friend. Because do remember, folks, I know that we have Will Clapp. Okay, we're excited about Will Clapp. We certainly <laughs> are. All right. However, <laughs> guard is certainly important for this team. <laughs> And then Christian Mahogany, a guard. All right. Who had the best draft, chat? Who had the best draft? Neil, I see you out there. Gerard, I see you they out there. They already know. Come they on, guys. Yeah, but the thing Nation, is, like, they already know. Draft, Dolphins fans going to say the Dolphins had the best chat. The Patriots fans going to say the Patriots had the best draft. Bills fans going to say. Come on, guys. Don't be biased. Come on. And Bills don't be fans biased. are not. Yo, listen, dude. Ball. Bills fans aren't going to say that, that we had a good draft. Not at all, man. It was. I don't know. Pats. Patriots. Worst case scenario. I'd say oh, the Pats did. In the chat. Pats, Pats, Pats. Yeah, Pats, no, Pats, I'd say the Pats, Pats probably Pats. had the best one. <laughs> Let's go. No, they know we had it. Stay my mad. life real. Stay Stay one six says you. not the Bills. Yo, dude, trust me. Dude, trust me. I am just as upset as all of you for how this draft turned out. But it's yeah, what no, it is. I, Dan, you, Dan, you better my mistakes. draft day. That's not how it falls. 110%. But thank God my name is not Brandon Bean, and, and I am not the GM of the Buffalo Bills. Or otherwise, hang it up, baby. Hang it up, baby. We'll see how it plays out. But damn, guys, listen, you know what? I was feeling really good about that mock draft. Yeah. I feel I like agree. we do a seven round next week. Seven round mock okay. draft next week. Yeah, we got to do more of these. Wait, what? We got to do more of these. 
more more of these yeah mock drafts dan yeah, mock drafts. You there, buddy. yeah i mean we could do one more i mean we've only been streaming an hour and a half no i'm saying more in general you know each week <laughs> the patriots <laughs> finally won a poll <laughs> let's go <laughs> oh wow. yeah, the patriots finally won a poll <laughs> <laughs> on the rise look <laughs> on the rise. Folks, you know what i'll tell you what folks it's been a while since we discussed roundtable sports merch okay Ooh, has been low-key and i know a lot of you guys you know like for a while our graphic tees were super super popular but listen we are still releasing designs and we're going to be a lot better of reminding you guys of some of the things that we have in store over there. We're planning on releasing a hell of a lot more designs in the graphic tee department. And we have our own hat collection, which is about to be coming out. Retro style snapbacks. I think you're going to love them. All right. It's a city inspired pigskin club. Just imagine, baby. <laughs> The Pigskin Club, baby. That's going to be something that's about to be released right now. But as you guys can see, listen, we have so many awesome graphic tees. They're oversized, high quality, have them for so many different players. Obviously, we have a bit of favoritism right toward the AFC East team. Several designs of players all across the league, except for the Patriots. Sincerest apologies. Colby, we do have the right, Tom we'll Brady. And so we yeah, do have the Tom Brady graphic tee, though. So that's pretty sick. At you know what I would game. love? I think I think another one Patriots fans would love. I mean, he was here for three years, just signed to another three-year extension. Kendrick Bourne is like one of the most beloved players in New England right now. So I think that'd be another heat one that would sell like a hot cake. Let us yeah. know. Let us know in the chat, Patriots fans. Kendrick Bourne? Kendrick Bourne merch? Oh, Why yeah. yeah. We for- oh, yeah. We forgot. We have a brand new Josh Allen is trash rendition as well. I <laughs> uh, this was inspired by the waste management sign. <laughs> <laughs> it just says Josh Allen's trash. Looks like waste management, but it's a new Josh Allen is trash t-shirt. We Round need table. an Aaron, Aaron Rodgers graphic tee. Oh, yeah, we do have an Aaron Rodgers graphic tee. Do we? Is somebody asking about it. Was somebody asking about it? We do have an oh. Aaron Rodgers graphic tee right over here, folks. I didn't know we even had that. We're going to update it, though, since we're um, officially going to new uniforms. That's crazy, uh, so, guys, the Jets graphics will all be updated after the. Um, I mean, we should probably. I should probably work on it now. Think about it, because we know which jerseys they're wearing. But don't be, don't be afraid. We will be getting. Even though I'm noticing there's a picture of him tearing his Achilles on here. <laughs> Is there? Is there really? I don't know. It seems but, like. Well, this is definitely like, gonna get. We're definitely redoing this because that look how ugly that uniform is. Like it is disgusting. I literally am excited that we're going to the uh, full time new uniforms. My life is real. Seven sixteen had a had a kind of a cool idea. You know, Kendrick Bourne. You do do like a Kendrick Bourne, a couple of like little graphics of him, right? And then you say Bourne Patriots. That's crazy. That's kind of tough. Yeah. That's kind of tough. Bourne Patriots. Damn. But That's folks, hard. definitely let us know and always let us know what players you would like to see be represented in our graphic tee collection. We have a bunch of unique designs as well. Some of the classics like Josh Allen is trash or Josh Allen is your daddy. We have so many different options right here. Sauce Gardner. That's my can favorite. You to, can you go to our bestseller? Because I'm just still shocked at why it is. We got we got Chris he's saying he's still the, waiting the, on the, that Christian uh, Gonzalez is. merch. Oh, he's Will still waiting Levis. on that Christian Gonzalez Design. That's a good one too. Where the Levis one? Y'all got Will Levis on here? Yeah, you know we do have Will Levis. Levis. That's our it's top good. seller is Will Levis. Yeah, which is, is it crazy. really? Yeah. Surprisingly yeah. enough, yeah. I have no wow. idea. But somehow the Will Levis shirt is getting exposed places. Now the reason why there's certain teams that are covered and not because AFC South Roundtable we got every team from there and the NFC West and the NFC North. So if you notice a trend here, those are the teams that we have. Of the teams that we've expanded to. That's right? crazy. Um, so the best sellers, number one was this. The Houston Texans AFC South champions, bro. This went crazy. This was our number one seller for sure. And then second was the Bills AFC's champions. Yeah. And then Will Levis. Mm, interesting. So are these in order of top sellers right here? Yeah. Best selling. Best selling dude have the Josh Allen graphic tee, the Tua shirt, Tyreek, Matt Milano. Oh, dude, I love that Matt Milano graphic tee, bro. That's my favorite one that I have. 
And then Stefan. I, like, I like the James Cook one. I like the uh, color of the. Oh, need to make a Mike Williams sandwich shirt. <laughs> oh yeah, we do. I got. We got to give NYJ Matt like all the money though. <laughs> James Cook, and then uh, with Matthew Judon all day. You need to make a Matthew Judon shirt. Dan, is there a wide right shirt, Megan? <laughs> I'm surprised we haven't made a wide right shirt. Paul, <laughs> make a wide right shirt, dude. Oh, man. I mean, I'm just trying to think of like a famous logo that like we could draw inspiration from for wide right. Beals. <laughs> instead of, so instead of the Bills football, logo, it's a Bills yeah. logo. Yeah, yeah. So have the Bills logo, but like just like have like this streak go like way too far. Or something like that. Just all across. Instead of a football, he's kicking an L. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a lot of people want the Christian Gonzalez. Yeah, man. Seems a lot like of people want that Christian Gonzalez. Need a Christian Gonzalez T. Okay, man. Yo, listen, dude. We'll knock it out. We will knock it out. Well, guys. Definitely go ahead and check out that merch, baby. Because it is absolutely... Inferno, if you were to ask me. All right, guys. The link is in the chat, by the way, if you guys are interested to check it out. More than yeah, yeah, yeah. Link is in the chat in case any of you guys want to doctor up. Like I said, I am super excited. Um, so we are like releasing, like, we're really trying to get into the snapback game, like hat game, because I have like more hats than any man should own. And I love the whole like retro style. We're coming out with like a city version like for every single team, but it's but it's more of like a city call out. It's super retro looking. It's going to be super sick. We're excited to release some of the designs. Hopefully we'll have those for sale next week. And uh, yeah, most definitely, folks. Can I get it shipped to the UK, someone said? Yeah, we Before. ship worldwide. Yeah, we ship worldwide, my friend, wherever. Worldwide. London Yo. Worldwide. Yo. <laughs> London Pigskin Club. Dude, oh, I'm gosh. excited about the Pigskin Club hats, baby. That's going to be damn. Hey, chat, listen, all right? <laughs> so we were so we were debating on like what we should have because like we're planning on doing like the city, so say for example Buffalo and then a design and then Pigskin Club at the end. So we were saying Pigskin Club or we were saying tailgate team or backyard football. I thought Pigskin Club was the coolest. And Richie geeks out every single time that I say it. I think well, that's pretty When dope. I saw Dan Mitchell say, pigskin club. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was I, I lost. I absolutely lost it. I thought it was the funniest <laughs> thing I ever heard. I think we I have to do it just for you. Player. But, um, dude. I, dude why, why don't you I be the best seller? And you're, you're a genius. Who knows? Dude, it might be. Oh, my. Well, that's hilarious. Tabletop buffaloes. Where did TD go? You point. know, he's taking a little break. He's a father. One day. I'm a father. Who the hell is now. the big skin club? Yo, bro, it's a football club, right? Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. And so I'm the only one that's ever heard of a football be referred to as a pig skin. Yeah, pretty much. No, nah, I'm just kidding. Back in the day, <laughs> homie. Back in the day. Damn. Dan, what's your favorite part about BetUS? It's my favorite part about BetUS, dude. It has to be the customer service. Has to be the customer service. Has to be the lightning speed withdrawals. And it has to be MLB opening day, my friend. Because let me tell you what, dude. I go on ahead and I bet quite a bit on the NFL. That is for damn sure. But I crafted the perfect opening day baseball parlay. And I guarantee you it's going to hit. I placed it earlier. $50 win 365 Let me tell you exactly what it is, Richie. Go on ahead and put it up real fast. It's rolling down. Cincinnati Reds, do me a favor and take that minus one and a half. They freaking canceled. They uh, my Mets got rained out for opening day, like whack. Sorry. Yeah. So the Braves and the Phillies got canceled too, which is upsetting. But it doesn't matter. I'm still putting together this absolutely ill parlay. And folks, listen, they're matching 125 percent of your first three deposits, and this is perfect because Sweet 16 is tomorrow. Sweet 16 is tomorrow, and MLB opening day. So for all of you degenerates in the chat that want to get in, but Richie. Go on ahead, show me this Major League Baseball absolute steal. Okay, my friend? MLB. All right, so take the Reds minus one and a half. Scroll on down until I see the Padres and the Giants. 
Okay, take the under seven and a half. All right, and then give me the Mariners money line. And then parlay that bad boy for whatever you want. Fifty bucks, three hundred and six dollars and thirty-seven cents, my friend. Mm. Well, if you want to tell Dan Mitchell's parlay, you saw it here. Don't forget to use our link because you'll get free money. But please do us all a favor and bet responsibly because definitely do that. Definitely want to make sure you guys are gambling responsibly, and we trust that you will. If you do have any issues with gambling, don't hesitate to reach out to one of us here at Roundtable Sports. We love to help you through anything because it is a serious thing. Uh, but yeah. they do have a lot of awesome traits here on this website, so definitely go check them out. Go click a link down below in the description. Open up your account, baby. Baseball's back. Bet US, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. With the game Bet US. Begins. You know what time it is? Is it Patreon? Patreon! Patreon! Oh, I was right. Glenn! Glenn, where is Glenn? I don't know. Glenn, Glenn. Wow. And so we're not showing. So we're not showing them anymore. Screen's not even lined up. What? The screen's not even up. What screen? <laughs> layout. <laughs> layout. What do you mean? To show, to show the Patreon members on the screen. Oh yeah. Um. I didn't put the link in the Patreon yet, so I got to do that first. You guys don't mind? Oh. <laughs> that, that, I got to first send them the link. Otherwise, the Patreon members can't join. Right, guys? No, Richie, I mean, you have a good I point. I do there. everything. I you got a good point there. So for a second, I thought you were greeting Glenn. And I was yeah, like, I, I, thought, I, was just, I was just excited for Glenn. I just know Glenn's going to be here. So in, in few, <laughs> okay. so I was just like, yeah, really I was like I'm not seeing anything. Like, I know Andy right. was like, guys, where's the link at? Yeah, and he's like, right, now where's my link? <laughs> All right, the link is posted. Who do you think is going to be first in line? I think it's going to be Andy or Glenn. No, nah, it's going to be nah, Andy. You give me LaSalle. Andy! Oh, Andy! Look how fast. It's like lightning. <laughs> What's up, guys? What up, how man? You, how you brother? doing? TD, I know you ain't going nowhere. You ain't fucking retiring. Who do I got to fight? Who do I <laughs> yes. I my, my regular season entertainment is not going anywhere. I ain't giving that up. <laughs> he would fight for you, TD. He would fight for you, bro. No comment, Andy. I can't speak on my retirement right now. It's okay. You just DM me. You don't, not have, you don't have to speak in the public. Just DM me. I'll find him. I, I, I put the details on Twitter. Like, 20 minutes ago, man, of what happened. So you ain't just going nowhere. Know. Unacceptable. Um, all right, man. We'll see. <laughs> he's not Can't going let the anywhere. haters win. He's he's not going anywhere, Andy. Trust me. Exactly. He's doing, if he um, retires, he lets the haters win. That would be a... Yeah, we'll fly out to Miami and uh, we'll do the show from his house so he doesn't have a choice. All right, all right. I'll another read draft, you. please. Don't worry. We'll be doing another draft next week. Tune in to the AFC East Rail Table next week for a seven-round mock draft. Sorry. Right. Yeah, you definitely need to do another <laughs> mock draft because, Dan, that was fucking terrible. Dude, it was fucking <laughs> horrible. It was fucking horrible. Listen, I need redemption. I have never had a mock this draft. This is who's representing bad. your Buffalo Bills, Andy, this I've, guy? Oh, I've oh. never. All you I've had to never... do was trade back trade back in the first round, get Leggett in the early second, and pick up an extra third. You would have been fine. You All right, right. I've, I've right. heard enough. Right. And you're fired. Right. Andy, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if anyone takes over for me, I'm I've not been here. doing mock drafts since like October. So you have <laughs> <Since been>. October, <laughs> my man. I could have traded down. You're right. You're right. That was a mistake. I, I was I was mocking for Richie because I know he wasn't doing mock drafts, even though he should have after week two. Now, I'm a big component, and I'm like the only Jets fan that doesn't do mock drafts in the middle of the season, even though when there's every right for them to do it. But I just you had every right it. to start doing it five minutes into that game. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you should have whipped out the you know what? Mock drafts a bit later. Tenth, tenth pick isn't isn't the worst. 
you know, seven wins, baby. Seven wins. Seven, seven wins. wins. Yeah. Seven hey, wins. Dan, did you ever do anything with that picture I sent you? No, but I have it close to the vest, baby. It's going to be used. You need to it's going to be used. Thing. It's going to be used at the appropriate time, but I still have it. Hey, yo, it sounded a little sus from someone who don't know what's going on back here. There's yeah. a, there's a, there was a uh, thing going around about the teams that have lost the most over the last like decade, and the yep. certain teams are on there. Yep. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. And so I have it at my yeah. disposal in case TD gets extra delusional. He's been well behaved this evening. Or Richie. Or Richie. Yeah. Hey, hey Andy, Andy, can you send me the, can you send me the one with the team with the least amount of Super Bowl wins? Ugh. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of those. You. Yeah, send that one. <laughs> I can also I can also send, send it to me though. Hold, I don't think uh, hold I, I got a couple. Yet. I got a couple things. When are you eating those wings, TD? Man, get out of here. Ooh, Andy. he brings up another good point. Man, okay, man, we gotta just just pick a day. We, we gotta, gotta do it. Ah. Uh, should we do it at the first event? Oh, yeah. By the way, folks, we were also talking about this. Yet another announcement, okay? If you had, fun, if you had fun at the first AFC East Roundtable event, Ooh, I did. Tell you what, folks. I did. I did. Let me tell you what, folks. All right? We are going to all four stadiums next year. All four stadiums, including Foxborough. You're welcome, Colby. The best and, uh, one. The best one out of the four. <laughs> and, well, I mean, from what no, I was not. Yes, but it is, Titty. Titty, like have you been to Miami, bro? You better everybody, see. You everybody see. said it ain't better than Miami. Titty, Titty, I'm going to walk you around myself, hand on hand, me and you. We're going to be skipping like two. But I don't know. It's, I it's I not. As long as we don't take the stairs like Richie made us. But, hey, well, listen, You have guys. no idea. That was. So the, so, the reason, so the reason why we're announcing this is that next week we are going to put together some sort of email list. No, so we're now, man. Can, Oh, never mind. This is the email list. Uh, Richie, please go on ahead and give the further instruction of what to do. I got you. So basically all this is, guys, if you're interested to be on our email list, which basically will be um, anybody that sends us an email at afcsroundtable at gmail.com, just say, hey, interested in the events this upcoming year. Basically, we're going to stockpile all the emails that emails us at the AFC's Roundtable. And when we finalize the events, the email list will be getting the first details before the public. Okay. So that's really what you get out of it. Um, we will be announcing everything, of course, on live shows, on Twitter, all social media platforms. But the email is important if you want to get first dibs on tickets because we don't know how fast they'll get sold out. We don't even know what games we're doing. We don't know which dates yet. We're still figuring all that out. Expect these announcements to come around May. So if you want to be on the priority list, for the roundtable sports events, we did one last year. It was fantastic. We're expecting a new four this year. If all things go well, email us at the AFC's roundtable Gmail. You see it on the screen and just say, hey, interested in this year's events. And that's all you have to say. We just need to get your email. I'll add it to the list. And then over in May, we'll be sending out emails of all the events and details of prices and tickets and everything that comes about it. Uh, because a big yep. part of what we're building here is we want to get more community and do stuff in person. I think that's a big part of what uh, we oh, yeah. like to do here is uh, experience you guys in person. And I feel like it's it was a lot yeah. of fun last year to meet you guys and uh, have a game day experience with all you folks. Yeah, that was dope. I ain't gonna lie, I really enjoyed it. And so absolutely, folks, when it comes down into it, last year, what it included was a tailgate party, a live show where you could watch us do our thing live while we streamed at the exact same time. And then also the opportunity of sitting with us in the game. We had our own section. Everybody was there screaming their heads off. This is going to be in Buffalo. It's going to be in Foxborough. This is going to be in Miami. And it's going to be at MetLife Stadium as well. We will sell full packages and we will also sell tailgate party only. So regardless, email us if you want to be on the priority list of any one of those events. I look forward to meeting each and every single one of you fools, dude. As soon as that schedule, as soon as the schedule's released, we're gonna come up with the exact four games and we're gonna be moving from there, guys. So I'll say this for those, you know, um, if you really wanna um just hang out with the fellas and our the big community that we all have, um, all through the division, start preparing now if you want to 
for the, for these events. Hopefully, y'all can come to all four with us, but I'm sure it'll be likely to the one of your team. If you want to come to all of them, that's cool too. But we hanging out. We on the road this year. We're about to have some fun, man. So um, I look forward. Yeah, I, I look I look forward to enjoying it with um you four guys and everybody watching that's gonna be able to make it because some of the Jets guys that we got to hang out with last time, that was pretty dope and we're pretty cool, you know. So oh, yeah. um we, we talk our trash, but it's it's pretty oh, fun yeah. experience. So and and fun Henny, fact, I better see at, you there, Hennessy. And fun right. fact at the Buffalo <laughs> event, fun fact at the Buffalo event, it's all making all these guys go through a table. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, we all of them are going through a table at the Buffalo I've been, four, four, I've been to four Buffalo Bills games then in Buffalo. So I've experienced. So how so, far how games. far how far is it from Niag yeah. Niagara? About 30 minutes. Not far. Oh okay. wow. About yeah, 30, we, need, we need to do Miami on the road in Buffalo. Yeah. Dude, I'll never it, forget, bro. I was a freshman in college at a yeah, tailgate. Miami in Buffalo. Buffalo be sick. I was at a tailgate mm -hmm. in Buffalo for Jets. Uh, Bills, a freshman in college. I'm wearing a Darrell Revis jersey. Someone's like, yo, Revis, go long. I was like, oh, someone's nice. Like, this is great because I felt so out of, like, say, I'm, like, running a nice little deep post. Oh. And then I'm waiting for the ball. He drops the ball, gives me the bird. I was like, all right. Wow. <laughs> That's how we're doing it. Bills Mafia, baby. Bills Mafia. I love it. <laughs> Speaking of Bills Mafia, is it? Yeah. Eating some noodles, baby. What you yeah, oh, baby. Dude, you eating some ramen? Baby. Some yeah, ramen. dolphin flavored. I love dolphin ramen. <laughs> ramen. Yo, uh, yo, listen, stop sleeping on, stop sleeping on shin ramen, folks. S H I N. Don't get me wrong, I love the classic cup of noodles every now and again, but shin ramen, bro. Pause. Incredible. What? <laughs> Just blew a kiss. A chef's Chef kiss. Mwah, get it. <laughs> I never had Still one. Build. Shin ramen sounds like something I needed to pause. Yeah, Dan. Um, yeah, Dan. That uh, that mock draft was dog shit. But you Dude, know, it was it, terrible. It's, it's how it felt. <laughs> it's how it felt to you. Now, my suggestion would have been to trade uh, twenty eight to the Commanders. They had yep. two second round picks. You give them sixty and twenty eight, and you take their two seconds. Bam. It You're wouldn't right. have mattered. You got Josh Allen. You're it right. don't matter. That's why it does matter. You're right. Dude, you know what? Me, it, it, it kind of right. It doesn't matter because with Josh Allen, it doesn't matter who's out there, really. You're right. Oh, my God. That team I drafted still wins the division. It does because <laughs> no one – it, it stops <laughs> everybody in the division from doing anything. Yeah, absolutely. Stop, you, can, you can't run on that team. You can't pass on that team. It's, it's a wrap. Put a condom on it. It's over. Put uh, a condom on it. <laughs> yeah. I like oh, it. Yeah, no. yeah man. Yeah, man. The bills are the bills are, are going to be good. I think the Brandon Bean's pretty much hedged his bets, right? Like he went after all the positions of need. We needed a safety. We went and brought that Taylor Rapp, and then we went and got Mike Edwards. We needed a receiver. We get Curtis Samuel. We needed a guard. We went and got Clap. We needed pick a spot uh, defensive end. We went and got Two Hill. We needed a linebacker. We got Moreau. So they went and ba basically hedged their bets. The draft is open. So if they don't get a receiver until round four, you know. Okay, if they don't take a receiver at all, all right, well, maybe next year. You know, the, the draft has to fall to you, right? You don't want to just reach for some guy. And then uh, we did that way back in the day with uh, who's that wide receiver? Graham out of UNC, I think, way back. He was like a seventh round grade. We took him in the third round, and he was just fast. It was terrible. But you don't want to, you know, do that. If you can improve somewhere, guaranteed or, you know, much more likely, do what you got to do. I don't think that draft was as dog shit as most people think, but it was pretty bad. It was bad, man. Dan Mitchell. Bad. Listen, listen, I promise you, I was rusty. That was the worst I've ever seen the board fall to me ever out of every Yeah, blame I've the board. Like that, bro. I've blame the like board. Boo. Glenn. <laughs> Glenn. Hey there, how y'all doing? I was so excited for you, Glenn. How you doing? Man? I know. I wasn't going to get on, but you were so excited for me, I decided to call in. You weren't going to Hey, Kiki. Hey, yeah. TD, you know what? Josh Allen does have a record. We got to give it to him. He's the most, he's a quarterback with the most winning record that hasn't been to the Super Bowl ever. Oh, wow. in a class of the world, <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, he, he got the biggest winning percentage that hasn't gone to the Super Bowl. 
Wow. God, man. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. man. I'm not going to be able to sleep. <laughs> hey. Hey, Richie, I have a question for you. Oh, I'm sure it's going to be a very reasonable question. Well, I mean, you had a worse, you had a really bad offensive line, right? Uh, yes. Last year. So you brought bad. in, you brought in the oldest tackle you could bring. And then on top of that, you brought in the second oldest tackle to protect the, the oldest quarterback in the league. Yeah, it was, yeah, Good it was luck. Old, old and negative. <laughs> no. It's called winning now. We're not winning for the future. We're winning now. You want to get veterans. What do you mean? Yeah, it, but, but hey, I'm with you. If if Phoenix or what you call his falls to you in a second, you better pick him up. Nix or Phoenix, I, I was you. Now, TD has, I mean, you know these people are fighting on the dang, dang um, X or Twitter or whatever it is now about who to pick and all that, and here you are throwing in your own stuff. I thought you were about probability and possibility. I thought you were about prob probability, TD. What did I do wrong? Man, you're saying Miami should get Phoenix. Is that a probability or a possibility? Well, it depends on where we draft them at. <laughs> it ain't a good probability. Well, he So we shouldn't talk... A First of all, he may be gone. Um, but if he's on yeah. the board, if he's on the board, Glenn, what do you want to do? Take, take what you need. I mean, okay. here, here you go with here, here you go with quarterbacks. Here, here you go. Here you go with round, What you gonna do? Pass on them. Here's what you know about quarterbacks for oh. sure. This is the thing. There is then thirty quarterbacks taken in the last three years. Over thirty quarterbacks. Tell mm -hmm. me how many how many are starters. No, you tell me. I don't know. Trevor Lawrence, Purdy, and Stroud. There ain't nobody else. 30 quarterbacks and only three of them. In the last what? Three years. Okay, three of them are starting. Okay. Yeah. So the ch what I'm saying is the chance of you getting a quarterback, even in the top five, that will make it. Remember, last year there was three. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, what's the name was injured? Um, Indianapolis quarterback. Um, Anthony Richardson. Richardson. He was injured, so I give him that and stuff. So you don't really know about the him. But the chance of all, th even those three that's picked in the top five, some of them, may, maybe two of them might not work out. Yeah, but that's fine. At the end of the day, the Miami Dolphins are all the way up a creek if two of them work out this year. Interesting fact. Interesting fact, too. The uh, the hit rate since 2011, the, the hit rate on quarterbacks taken in the first round is a 40% hit rate. Interesting fact. Receivers is 57.6 and offensive tackles wow. is 58.8. You know what that means, Kobe? It means we're going quarterback. <laughs> and we're going to hit Jaden Daniels. Bust. What constitutes, <laughs> what constitutes a hit, though? Second That's contract, maybe? It was by Fox. I would have to kind of read exactly what their yeah. description I just was. want to give a big shout-out. We have a really special guest right now um, in the chat. They can't hang with us this year, Richie. You know it, Coach. You know it. Robert, Come on. Uh, <laughs> what up, dude? Coach, we great. Love to have the coach in here. You got to get your shit together, Coach. This is your year. You're out of here, okay, if we don't win. Okay, this is it, Coach. I love you. I trust you. Come on, come on, coach. I've been <laughs> I've been I've been supporting you and it's it's time. Richie said no it's excuses. time to move on. It, it, it's time for you to wake up and get that offense figured out, even though you're not an offensive mind. You're the head coach of the damn football team, coach. We got the quarterback. I agree. I agree. Drake Manning. Well, it's funny if that was out. really if that was really um Robert Sala, we would never know. Could you imagine? <laughs> it really was him. <laughs> he was just watching. You would us. never know. You'd be surprised. Hey, 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 hey. What up, dude? Real. All the way over, all the way over in Florida now. Florida in Florida right now. Right oh, on God. vacation. You're on vacation. Enemy territory. Why are you vacationing <laughs> in enemy territory? Yo, I've been, been doing this for years. Orlando. I've been doing this for years. I've been doing this for years. I've been since I was a kid. So Yo, listen, I how went about here. Those Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> <laughs> you suck. 
I haven't heard Lisa, you about that team in a long time. I haven't been them up because they are so trash. They are so garbage. Yeah. So I, I'm, I was hoping that you don't bring them up because oh. it brings up a lot of sad Nick's things. Just casually have forty points right now, TD. By the way, Knicks are up by forty points. Oh, if you're wondering, they, 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 the Knicks are up by forty right now. Up by forty. Yeah. Well, I didn't even know we were playing against you. I've been so out of it when it comes to come to come to the Brooklyn Nets right now. I know everything about the NBA right now except for the Brooklyn Nets. No, we're, we're, on, for we're up on Toronto. We're not versing you. We're up. Oh, okay, on. okay, okay, okay. Well, well, I like you guys' this, um, mock draft. But here's the thing, Richie. Go into the dark side, man. Go into the oh. dark side. Take take that quarter. Take that quarterback. Ooh, take that quarterback. Like though, because because honestly, honestly, I like like Jordan Travis in the fourth round, fourth round as well. Because I feel like with that injury injury um he could just sit and just relax we, they're not going to bring him out there bring him out there at all at all like even if they're like oh my god i'm f- sure about him he's injured you can't put him in you can't put him in no matter no matter what type of stuff that they that the media will try to do because i honestly feel like i like i wasn't interested not interested in sam donald but i also feel like the media didn't do any favors because it felt like when it comes to the media, every single one of every single one of the media's was like, was we gotta start him, we gotta start him now, we gotta start him now to Todd Bowles, like start him now, start him now, start him now, and then they start him, and then look what happened, to, look pick what six happened. In the first throw, yeah, pick six in the first throw. It's like okay, okay, because that's why I feel like the media sometimes pressures the court, pressures the head coaches sometimes, especially if they, especially if they like can't take it, can't take the pressure. Of like the media, so sometimes they just like, okay, here we go, <laughs> okay, here we go, here, here, I'll do it, and then fuck, everything gets fucked up. Yeah, I know, and, and Lacelle, yeah. that's a great point. Yeah, uh, appreciate the call as always, Lacelle, and enjoy your vacation in Florida for sure. And you know, Lacelle wants me to go to the dark side of the force, and that dark side basically means, ah, uh, the Jets are drafting a quarterback, but the question is where, the sixth round. A- that's very likely. I think the yeah. Jets could draft the quarterback in the sixth. They can do, but guess who owns Mr. Relevant's draft pick this year? You own the, the back end two picks, right? The last two picks. The Mr. Both Relevant. Of them? Mr. We Relevant. Both last two picks. Y'all are so irrelevant. Oh, yeah. Watch <laughs> watch us get the new Brock Purdy, baby. Woo! Purdy's an anomaly, man. Hey, yo. And it's kind of cool, though. Like, not even lying. Like, bet US, not even like a plug or anything, but. They do have uh, a Mr. Irrelevant prop bet, which I thought is really cool. You can predict which position uh, Mr. Irrelevant is going to be this year. And Jets fans, we own the pick. It's going to be wide we, receiver. We own that pick. Now nah, it's going to be quarterback, bro. Come on. It's going to be wide receiver, bro. Just watch. <laughs> wide receivers at plus 600. You know what? We don't even need BetUS. Me and you right now, $10 down. What position? <laughs> <laughs> well, we shall see. All right, folks. We have one final caller. Of the show. Don't you guys bring ready? Him on. No, it's not. <laughs> He's it's, out uh, defeated. It's the Dolphins. I don't know why King Lowski didn't decide to come tonight. Sure, Rich. His throat was hurting. Ah, <laughs> uh, never mind. His throat ain't hurting. <laughs> hey, you see, East Roundtable, gentlemen, how are we doing this evening? <laughs> We're doing good, man. <laughs> Great. King Lowski. Now that we got the pleasantries out the way, let's get down to business. Now, here we go again. What did I tell y'all last week when I came on here last week and told y'all what the hell Dan Mitchell was doing? Huh? Now he done bought his shenanigans to the AFC East roundtable. He done bought them bullshit ass mock drafts to the mic to the damn round table. Knowing damn well you ain't gonna have no damn good draft just like tonight, son. You gonna be saying the same da- the same damn thing on draft night. Oh man, this ain't no goddamn good draft. This shit is trash. We it doesn't look good for us, and you know. And, and 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 you know, fella, yeah, Dan Mitchell, we know. We know your draft is going to be trash, okay? <laughs> Accept that shit, Dan Mitchell. Tell him, Loski. <laughs> Tell him. Tell him you shut your damn mouth. <laughs> I mean, son, what is wrong with you? How many games we going to win this year? How many games? I want to hear it come out your mouth. How many games? 
three. <laughs> we got him. We got, we got him. We got him. We got him. Yeah, we got him, Missy. We got him. So you keep saying that all oh, year, 11 games. We know. We know what's going on. And, we, and two of them are going to be your butt. And two oh, of them going to be you. You can, you can. A chain got a chain attached to him. We gonna put foots in him. You can, you can believe, you can believe in A chain all you want to. You know, two of trash. You've been talking about. Hey, what was the name of your last stream, TD? Tell the people what was the name of your last stream. How many teams are better than the Miami Dolphins? You How many? What did your chat say, TD? How you many people said twenty plus? How many people? Let's low get them with Jets fans. Oh God! <laughs> Here we go with the lies, son. Stop with the lies, TD. Oh my God, bro! We, what you know, we, see, uh -oh, we got him like like the fans got Diddy. We got him, Richie. <laughs> we got him. Huh? You got him like the fans. That's global. I don't know. I don't know why you putting faith in your team like y'all about to do something. Drake, man, Kyle, Will. I don't care who you get, son. It is the bottom of the basement for you. The bottom of the basement, son. We were in the bottom last year. And then, and then let me tell you something. Now. And then let me tell you something, Pass Global. Your damn coach got the audacity to come out talking about he gonna get cute. He, oh, oh, quarterback may not be in the play. Boy, he better not get cute or we going to put foot in your ass for the next 50 <laughs> years. You better okay, stop getting cute over there. That. Yeah, you better stop getting cute. Me and you both love you. They don't go quarterback. We don't get it together. You don't get it Oh, my God. Why have you ever clipped one of his calls and put it on Twitter? That's so funny you just said that, Dan. I literally was just about to say, I think I have a new um, work for our video editor to go through every single call we've ever had with King Lowski and make a compilation of it. Because <laughs> that's great. I could sit back oh, here and just chill. God. And just chill. The greatest um, of King Lowski. Is there the a greatest of King? Get? It's Legend, oddly coming for the draft. It's uh, what do coming, you mean? You know, like, do do we do we know what days? Like, are we going live certain days? I know we got a we got a special day too. I believe it's day. We two. do have a spe we'll give you a little teaser. Going. All right, we do have a special announcement for draft coverage, folks. Round two and three, day number two. Us four will be live for the entire day two, but there's a caveat to it. It's on Bleacher Report, baby. Woo! The AFC East Roundtable's headed to Bleacher Report together. This is going to be an exciting time. Us four live reacting to the day two of the NFL draft on Bleacher Report. We'll, we'll give you guys some updates leading up to it of how you can download the app and the link and everything. So we would love it if you guys can show us some support on Bleacher Report. That's going to be day number two. That's going to be a lot of fun. Now, day one. I don't know what your guys' plans is, but um, I'm actually – I didn't even announce what I'm doing for the draft to even my know. Jets fans. Reveal it. Let's hear it. I didn't reveal this to Jets fans yet. All right, I'll what reveal it? it. Let's hear it. Your boy got invited to an event. Oh, in New York? Yeah, baby. I will okay. be in the green room at MetLife Stadium for the Jets draft round number one. With Jets alumni, Jets players, don't know who. But I was invited, and I had a plus one, so you know that my boy Jack's coming through. So it's going to be a great time, and I'll be live streaming from my phone because that's the way. I can't do a, a big studio. They, I, I asked that. I'm like, can I bring my equipment and do a whole live show? They're like, no, nah, you can just You're do not. You do a training camp with your phone. I was like, yeah, that's fine. I'll do it. So your boy's going to be live from MetLife Stadium for the draft, which is awesome, man. And without all the support that you guys show for me, I would have not been invited to this event. It's an exclusive party. I don't know what to expect, but thank you guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. I Sweet. wish the Patriots did stuff like that. They don't. It's going to be dope. 
I don't know how we can incorporate a roundtable collab, but like maybe you can send me a link and you and like uh, I don't know, but because that's what I was debating. I'm like, do I want to go? Because then I can't do like a live. But I'm like, I guess hey, I'll just sacrifice and do it. For my you phone. get in that building, baby. You get in that building. Yeah, well, it's, yeah hard, it's hard to pass that up, right? Man. Yeah, you gotta go. Yeah, gotta bro. Go. I'm not mad at you for that. You gotta go. I'm not mad at you for that at all. Yeah, but so no, guys. On us. Yeah, but no. Listen. For the remainder of this month, we definitely like it's going to be draft heavy, obviously. Like, for example, tomorrow, our Bills roundtable, we're going to be doing a mock draft. All right. Having a really good conversation uh, with myself and Zbot and Kevin and then Mario from Hashtag Sports. Super excited to finally have four people on the Bills roundtable. And uh, it's it's good, folks. Listen, I've said this before. I'll say it again. We are cooking. We are planning. We are planning on being a full fledged damn network this upcoming summer where there's going to be a round table for every single division. There's going to be shows that are going on at the exact same time because we have been trying to say, yo, should we have this on Monday or like Wednesday night? At some point we've realized that we just need to have shows running simultaneously on their own respective channel when they come into it. So um, guys, stay tuned. Stay, stay tuned. I am so, so excited. Last year was the tease. This year is the full course. Baby, you wanna, do we do we know which one's launching next? You know, so they can go um, over and go so, so I told well, before you got here, we, today, we plugged it all. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So so we have NFC East and NFC South are finalized. We're waiting on one more confirmation to finalize AFC North and one more confirmation to finalize AFC West. And then we will be good. Colby is going to be hosting the AFC North roundtable. So we're excited yes, about sir. that. He's right. going to be talking to the Bengals and the Browns. Please let the Bengals guy know that Joe Burrow is a uh, receiver <laughs> merchant, please, for me. And I love uh, Joe also, Burrow. I'm not going to hold you. I love me some Joe Burrow. That's and then the, AFC the West Roundtable is going – and then so the AFC West Roundtable is going to be hosted by Zbot as well. So um, super, super excited to see how that plays out. We're going to try and sneak an episode in of one of them. We're thinking it's the NFC East. For some mock drafts stuff. But I don't before know. The draft. Right before the draft. So we're excited. So stay tuned, folks. A lot of Let's stuff happening. Go! We appreciate you guys big time. Peace and love to everybody in the chat. We'll see you guys later. Uh, just a little reminder. Uh, the huddle will not be happening tomorrow or Friday. We're off. We'll be back on Monday, which is actually my birthday. So I got a special Happy April birthday, Fool's Day birthday on, on Monday. So if you guys <laughs> want to tune in then, tune in. Uh, but the Jets roundtable will be live tomorrow, and the uh, the Bills roundtable will be live tomorrow. Um, Dolphins roundtable had a week off, and the Patriots roundtable doesn't exist until Kobe wants to. It's gonna uh, happen. It's gonna happen. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get it up. We're gonna get it up. We're gonna get it running. We just we want. I want to try to find the true Patriots fans, and not just those like naggers that are half in and half out and don't know what they're talking about. You know, I want to bring you guys the true. You got to get Jack in there for sure. New England Patriots, get Jack in there. The, the Patriots, yeah, Jack, not my Jack. There because he's, TikTok, right? Yeah. yeah. He's From just TikTok, got entertainment think so. purposes. Yeah, no yeah, matter. Y'all going to win three We'll get him on here. We'll get him on here. Are you kidding me? Get, get a good fight. Get Jack Cody <laughs> on the board, baby. Get Jack Cody. Yeah, we're going to win three <laughs> games, bro. It don't all right. Matter. Good night, everybody. Thank you for all the love and the support. Yeah. We appreciate you all. Hit the like button on your way out. Your, your boy's got to talk about the Knicks blowing out the Raptors by 40 points next up. See you guys The there. Raptors. Oh, my God. The Raptors. Yeah, they suck, and we blew them out by 40. That's what good teams do, baby. Let's go!